shit's gone sideways. Pedro, thanks so much for coming into Shit's Gone Sideways. <laughs> um, so you you've lived here since you were how old? Since you were eleven? Did you yeah. Say? So um, so hi guys, my name's Pedro. Um, I was born in São Paulo. Yeah. And then when I was ten years old, I moved to Rio. Yeah. And then and, 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 and who'd you then, who, so who'd you got with in Brazil? It was so my mum, my dad, my yep. sister. Yeah. I have an older sister. She's only about eighteen months older just, than me. Just um, move the microphone just a bit closer to you. Just a bit about there. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So um, I have a. Eighteen, eighteen months old, older sister. Um, yep. Yeah, and then we came here all together. Me, my dad, my mom, and my sister. Um, and yeah, my dad. Uh, before I start saying anything, let me just make it clear: like I came from a very, very good family. Yeah. Very like restrict family. Um, I have like a really big family, like in Brazil, and half of them living in America as well. Like my grandma, my uncle. All my cousins, I have cousins that they haven't even met yet because I've been here for so long. I haven't been able to leave the country for that long. I haven't even met them yet. What was the reasoning for um, for moving from Brazil to Australia? So um, my dad, he was a salesman. With He started at my mom's company. And then because he was doing so well there, first he's, they, they were very poor, my mom and my dad, when they first had me and my sister. Yep. And then um, he started his work working at my mom's company. What was it? What kind of company was so it? So like, let's say, um, so you have office, right? And you yep. need like pens or like whatever, like whatever they needed for office table, yep. calculators, things like that. Let's say a big company, let's say Qantas. Qantas, they want like 10,000 pens and calculators, but they want their um, the laser thing written on the like Qantas on the... Like yeah, so that. personalized stationery kind of business. Yeah, so yep. like he'll send it off to China, he'll charge them this much for like writing the name on the pen, you know, for labeling the pen, whatever. Yep. Yep. And then, you know, so for X, get for this much, whatever. Yep. And then he was doing, he was doing heaps of order. And then they're like, you know what? We're going to send you to Rio, to Rio de Janeiro, and open up a franchise there, but you're going to like run it. And um, and it's going to be, you know, and then and then we moved to Rio when I was like about 10 years old. Yep. And then he opened up um, like the franchise of that company. And yeah, and then, you know, he done really well for himself. And, um, he always had a hobby of flying helicopters, my dad, and he was a private helicopter. So like he done his private helico helicopter course, but you can't like you can you can fly people for fun, but you can't um, you can't like make money from it. So for you to make money from it, you need your commercial license. Yeah, okay. So but for you to have your commercial license, you need to learn English. You got to speak English, <coughs> and like you can't really like do like courses English courses in Brazil. Like don't get me wrong, every single school there it's mandatory <coughs> for you to. Uh, learn English like it's like here like there's English classes you know what I mean yeah um, that is the same thing so but did like, you get taught English when you were a kid um, at school but like you don't learn anything They're, like I knew how to say hi my name's Pedro sure the basics I don't speak English and that's it like I'm where I mean that's it like that's okay. it <laughs> yep, yep. yeah really basic stuff really yeah. basic like super basic yeah and then so yeah and then came here and my, sorry my dad was like you know what um because everyone back then, they used to go to America from Brazil to, like, try like try to make it, you know? Yeah. And my dad was like, um, <coughs> you know, fuck going to America. Let's go to Australia. That was that was in 2005. Um, there was many Brazilian, Brazilians back here, back then. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, he goes, let's go to Australia. He found, like, a helicopter, like, course thingy that they had here. The same one that they had in Brazil, like, in Rio. They had like a affiliation here as well. Yeah. But because we've never been here or anything, uh, his course was in Go Coast and we moved to Brisbane when we first came here. Okay. Thinking like, oh yeah, we'll probably be closed. That wasn't like Google Maps back, back <laughs> then. You know, we couldn't really like just check it, you know. It's, he goes, yeah. oh, it should be okay. And then when we got here, we realized, oh shit, that's like. It's a bit of a trip. It's a bit of a trip. It's a bit of a trip. Yeah. Anyways, like I went to the, my first six months, we lived there. My dad, like, he was hating it. He was like, man, this place so far. My mom, my mom was hating it. She goes, Brisbane is so quiet. From Brazil to, like, from Rio, come from Rio to here. Like, going straight to Brisbane. Like, everything closes at, like, 4 p.m., all the shops and, like, like, my mom was like, what the hell is this? Like, so your dad, so you're living in Brisbane and your dad was regularly traveling to the Gold Coast yeah, to, to do, do his to commercial, do his commercial, license. commercial yeah, helicopter yeah. license. But man, it's uh, expensive. It's very expensive. So like my dad sold, he sold everything in Brazil, like everything, literally everything. When we came to the airport, everyone was looking at us because we had like, my mom, my mom, <laughs> shit, like 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, she was very, um, what do you call her? Home maintenance. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah. She, no, they were very poor, like, one stage. And then, like, once my dad made a bit of money, you know, my dad was like, you know, you can have whatever you want, kind of, yep. pretty much kind of thing. Mum was like, yeah, sweet, like, one this, one that. And then, like, <laughs> man, when we got to the airport, like, everyone's looking at us. She had, like, we had, like, so many bags, man, so many bags. We literally moved our whole life here. Wow. Fancy bags, fancy shoes. Yeah. Or, I don't know she, or, and then, and yeah. then she, was, she was ready for a real, like, reality check when she got here. Yeah, I bet. Or she was like... So, so were you, was your dad doing an uh, English course here as well to... To fill um, that, to yeah, fill yeah, that gap. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He, so he was doing. So he started taking some private like classes back in Brazil before mm-hmm. we came here. Yeah. So when we first came here, he was like leading us. Like he knew more than we did. Like he know yep. he used to talk a bit more and things like that. Yeah. And but the second day that I arrived in Australia, I was starting high school already. But like I didn't start like wasn't like a special class or anything. I was straight into the high school class in year eight. And they're talking just fluent. Yeah, and they're just talking in English. They're talking, like I'm, they're talking to me like I know exactly what they're saying, right? And I'm standing there like, I, uh, no, I don't speak English. Mm. How do they make you feel? Oh, it's so, it's Lost? the most uncomfortable thing. You know, we try to like, because there's nothing I could say. And then like, but, you know, everyone's, t- I mean, Aussies, they're like the best people, I swear. I've never really had a problem with anyone like, well, Maybe I didn't understand what they were saying anyways. <laughs> They're like, talking absolute shit about you, but everyone, didn't know. Yeah, everyone, you know, always trying to help. And then even after me saying like, mm. like, you know, they're saying like, you know, okay, okay. And they keep talking, talking. And then my sister. Um, she would have been in the same boat, right? Yes, but we're the age. So like I was 14 when I came here. Mm. My sister, she was like turning 16. Mm-hmm. So she was at the age that she was starting to go out. She was starting to have like that little like light, light, uh, nightlife. Mm-hmm. So she struggled heaps when she came moved over here. I was at the age that I was like, whatever, anything's fun, you know. Like, yeah, I still had my mates there, like, but I was I wasn't going out. I didn't have like you know that group of friends that really attached me to it. I was just at the age I was like, whatever, that sounds fun, let's go. Did you find that you started to pick up English fast because you just you had to because exactly. everyone around you was and only like, speaking and because. I always thought like I don't I've always had a feeling like I've always had something since I was little I always, always want to le- like learn English mm. I'm always fascinated like always fascinated with learning like another language you know especially English because yeah. it was the main like the main language but like so yeah so when I came here it was just, I didn't want to socialize not because I didn't want to socialize with any Brazilians but like if you're if you're here like there's people that be, that lived here for like twenty. I still have an accent and everything. Don't get me wrong. Mm. But there's people that lived here for like twenty years, but because they go to the same groceries where they live, and it's like the suburb where like of the nationality. Yes. Let's say Peter Shem, That's where like um, there's a lot of Portuguese people that live there. Yeah. Or you know a lot of Brazilians, whatever. Like. Yeah. And he's constantly speaking your language. You're not gonna learn. That's right. These people move to a Brazil. cultural hub where it's all of the same nationality from where whatever country they've come from, and then they just there's no real need for them. Exactly right. Because you, you know you're in yeah. their comfort zone. You got to yeah. do your hairdresser. You get your hair cut. You still speak your language. <coughs> whatever you do, groceries. You talk to the cashier, and then like you speak your language. That's and still a like, that's still a pretty, pretty mature thought for you to have when you're a teenager, right? I think so. I mean, you know what? <laughs> Coming from a very immature person, yeah. <laughs> I, I think because when I'm fascinated with something, I mm. think I'll really go like, i really give like 100%, you know? Yeah. You like a challenge. Yeah. I love a challenge. Yeah. And I love proving people wrong too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. you're, you're lucky. So you, you've got, you've got these mates you're hanging out with, um, and they're not Brazilian, right? So they're not all Brazilian, speaking so English. Everyone so from, high, from a high school, mm. like they're all Aussies mm. and they're all like, maybe not, you know, Aussie background, but like. Grew up here and yep. like you know speak English constantly all the time. Yeah, and then but um there was this, the first six months there was I was in year eight. Another thing as well that I noticed was like when I first came here I was like, oh it's not too bad because everything that was we were learning, I already learned that like back in Brazil like the year before or like a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's okay. one thing me and my sister we found like we were like oh look we learned this here now but like we already learned this before, and then. But anyways, but like I remember, I had to like do ass- like ass- assessments, assignments, or I ha- I have to send up in front of the class and like and read out like something, and I'm not be able to say one thing. Like I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm pretty sure I was speaking Portuguese or something. <laughs> whatever comes down, you know, just whatever, just get me out of there. <laughs> yeah. So but it wasn't comfortable. Man, it was so uncomfortable. People talking to you, you try to like express yourself or like tell you something that you really needed, like they said, school, like. I remember exactly, you know, a few things that you, 
you got temptations like, oh, you know, I need to do this and that, I need help with this, and like, you try to do like the gestures and. My yep. mom used to do that a lot. Like, she would just speak in Portuguese <laughs> to the person. <laughs> I think it would just make her feel better, yeah. So, uh, did that help that you, you'd you already studied that stuff? So, that meant you, you, if you felt like you already knew it, then it could give you a chance to just like, oh, I, I, I'm just trying to relearn this stuff, w- describing it in, in English. Exactly right, yeah. But like, you know, <clears throat> but there's things as like, like, you know, maths, I could do that. But there's yep. other things of like, I don't know. Um, I say history, I would have learned things there but like could have been our history from Brazil and things like that or a few subjects that I was just I couldn't just you know just transfer, transfer. it yeah, yeah 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 so yeah I struggled quite a bit <laughs> did you have friends that were patient with you because right? you're trying to pick this stuff up yeah, in a very yeah, fast so like, rate so right so happened so like I, the first six months we were in Brisbane yeah my dad was like you know fuck this he couldn't find jo- he couldn't find work or anything yeah we didn't know anyone mm. so I could get here like he literally, like, we didn't know anything. He goes, like, brave move of him to come here. You know, I'll give it to him. And, like, he just wanted that the day. He wanted to put me and my sister in a better position than we were. Even though we're doing well in Brazil, man, the country, it's such a beautiful country, but, like, the government just fucks it up. Mm. Doesn't matter how well you're doing there. Like, you know, I have, like, distant family there. They're, like, are very wealthy. And they've been kidnapped, like, five, six times. Because wow. they know that dad's very wealthy. And yeah. they just pay ransom. But everyone there, you, you go buy a bulletproof car, it's normal for you to buy a bulletproof car. It's like, it's a standard thing to buy that, it from a car shop. That's how He's dangerous like, it well, is. what? You have a bulletproof car? Like, it's that, it's standard procedure. It's something like that you send me, like, do it. Yeah. And, and there, my dad was only robbed once in his life there. He lived there, there his whole life, and he was only robbed once because you got to be street smart there. You can't just, like, be talking in front of your apartment or your house. Yep. It's like a night and you see a couple guys walking up. That's what happened to him. He's he felt like he's seen a couple of nice dress, well dressed blokes, you know, a couple of white boys. He's like, Oh no, they're all right. Mm. Boom, they put a gun on him, like if, like they could have like, let's go inside, we still live like at his apartment. Like they didn't, they just say I've got anything on you, and it's none that and then they took off. But like this is the only time and it was just before we came here as well. Yeah. So you can't walk around there like, you know, like um, on the phone at nine o'clock at night after restaurant, you, you gotta put have your thing, put your rings, it washes away, and things like that. Yeah, you just gotta be like extra careful. More street smart, more aware. Yeah, exactly. But like the government just kills it. It's a beautiful country. Don't get me wrong. I love the place. But uh, so when you say that what the the government aren't what doing enough to no, crack down on crime, then not corruption, yeah, yeah, corruption. All the money, all the money that they get, <coughs> like they get, mm. like they had the World Cup there. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, you know, it means billions means we go for this for that. Like they just on the table just go to their pockets you know what I mean yeah it's like they said the rich get richer the poor get poor the money that's meant to be going to hospitals educations the cops are selling guns to the criminals because man cops don't get paid shit there like mm. why wouldn't we be corrupted yeah like you know if you can put someone over and they're gonna give 50 bucks you can smell a bit of alcohol <coughs> on them and like why would you hear that's there's a difference between Australia because they look after like you know the workers they're like a brick Brick layers, they get paid like four hundred dollars a clean, clean or something. They get paid like four hundred dollars a month. Mm. Here, man, you get paid like if it's your own little business, you get paid that like in a few hours. Yep, that's the difference. You know what I mean? It's huge. So you can understand how someone could be corrupted, right? One hundred percent. Like if I could, like, why would I? You know, I'm like <coughs> the government's not looking after. They're not looking after them. So like, why would they be? You know, like they'd be like, I, I need to make money. Man, at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. You got to feed your family. Yeah. Yeah. If they can get but, their annual pay in a month just by just exactly, doing some dodgy man, shit. If they can, you know, if they, and that's what they, and then that's what happens. Mm. And then they're selling guns. They start selling guns to criminals. They start selling drugs, and, and then and it's a whole just a whole. Yeah. So what happened? So with your dad, he was struggling so, yeah, to find work, and then what happened? Struggling to find work, and then my mum was heading Brisbane. She was like, I hate this place. It's so quiet here. And then and then there was another aviation place in Melbourne. And my dad was like, you know what? Okay, so let's go. Let's go to Melbourne then. But by the time we got to Melbourne, no, there was another helicopter training place. Yeah, yep. yeah exact same, yep. exact same company, exact, like exact semi like franchise. But this one was in Melbourne. Yeah, in Gold Coast. So my dad was like, okay, let's go to Melbourne then. Let's see, like a lot of things that my dad done was for, like was a lot for us and my mom too, you know, because my dad asked a lot for my mom to move over here. Mm. So if he seen her that she wasn't comfortable there, like he'll be trying to make her right and like make her feel comfortable. So he was like, sweet, let's go to Melbourne. Yep. But by, by the time we got to Melbourne, <coughs> so like he was already working, he was already not working for six months, man. So like all the money he had saved up in Brazil, 
and then you transfer that from her eyes, which is our currency, to dollar, you already you lose a little bit. You lose you're like you already lose, lose a little bit. I think one dollar you buy like three something eyes or something like that right now. I'm not too sure. But um, by the time we got six months of paying rent, food, rent, food, like just on basic things. Yeah, we've done a bit of like, you know, a bit of, you know, a bit of traveling, a bit of this, a bit of that, but like not too, not too hectic because like he has still had to do all his hours. You've got to do like 500 hours for your commercial license. Yep. I'm not 100% sure, but like I think so. And, and they're like $300 each or something. Like it's expensive hobby. So like he had all his money saved and then instead of the money that he has saved up going towards his course was going towards food, living. rent, living. Mm. And like he didn't, he miscalculated the cost of living and miscal- miscalculated that, you know, he thought, you know, maybe he would have found work straight away. And then money should start going, man. Start going down. That would have been quite stressful for him, right? It was so stressful. Imagine like, you know, now as a father, that's why like, I, you know, I look at my dad, I'm like, you know, man, that's, you have some balls. Like me, like sometimes I feel, I'm like, I, I'll move to Queens and I'm like, fuck, fuck it, let's move to Queens. But like, and then text, and then like, I'll have to go first, you know, like, you know, my conditions, I come, you know, I have my conditions as well. And like, I have to take the kids with me. And then like, it's just stressful. You've got kids with you. It's not about, you. once you have kids, it's not about you anymore. Mm. You know, everything you do, it's, it's about them. Yeah, because he's he's obviously, part of him wants to pursue this dream. He, he loves helicopters. He, he, man, he loves it. He loves it. Like, he, he's still to this day, man. He's like 50, he's like 55 or something. And, and like, he still dreams about it. Like, mm. he'll, never give up, he'll never give up on the dream. Yeah. Like, he'll still say like, you know, we're going to reach a, you know, I'll, I'll make it one day. And he's still hustling, he's still trying, you know? Yeah. But yeah, and then, so we went to Melbourne. He goes, fuck this place, I hate this place. My mom, she got really sick there. So my mom, she had, like, she had depression her whole life. Hmm. Um, from like, um, her mom, she never met her mom. Her mom left her at the hospital when she was born. Yeah, wow. So she never really like met that side of her family, you know? And that's something that always played on mine her whole life. Hmm. So she always grew up with that. And then coming here, she had a little episode um, in Brisbane. She was getting very sh- like sh- stressed out. She mixed like they gave her these like antidepressants. The doctor changed her antidepressants. She took both of them together or something like that. Yeah. And she had a reaction to it, and she had a full panic attack. Proper like, I wasn't home. I was thinking it was just my sister and my dad at the time. Yeah. And my mom just dropped like same so like you know when like really like like she got so stressed out that she's fully collapsed. Yeah. And then after that, you know, my dad's like, fuck, let's go to, let's go to Melbourne. Went to Melbourne and then we're leaving with this um, Japanese guy. So it was us, like my dad, my dad went first because he needs to find work. Yeah. And then me, my sister and my mom were followed not too long after as well. Um, and yeah. And, um, and then head of Melbourne, man, my mom was like, it's too fucking cold here. <laughs> so it was, it was worse than Brisbane. Finally, it was worse than Brisbane because yeah. it was freezing there. So like when we got to Brisbane, that was so got, it was the first six months. We got here in February, February fifth, seventh or something. And then so it was like summertime. And then for six months, my mom was like, you know, let's get out of here. Went to Melbourne during like winter. <laughs> Fuck this! Yeah. Like, and then same situation. Were like, you still at high, Were you still at high school at this stage? Did you have to go to a high so, school in okay, Melbourne? Sorry, so this all happened. Um, so once I had to move there, me, me and my sister, we stopped studying. My dad couldn't enroll us into, like, into schools anymore. Like, it's very expensive, man. It's like, me and my sister together, together would have been like 20K, it's like $10,000 each, plus plus the visas, all these, you know, you, you're here on a, we came here on a student visa. Mm. So like, all this stuff was like, we had to renew the visa. So money just going, going, going. So like, we done six months there of year eight, came down to Melbourne, didn't study at all. We were in Melbourne for six months. I, mean, I didn't study. I was working. It was my first job I ever had. It was in a butcher shop. Yeah. For eight hours a day, I was still there, man. It was a, a little um, shopping like mall. Mm-hmm. And I was just making uh, chicken skewers. Like, these guys give me cash hand, you know. I was super young. It was like 14, 20, 15. So I just, just have to move to Melbourne. I couldn't sp- still couldn't speak English. <laughs> but I was just there in my little corner, you know, putting the onion, capsicum, chicken, onion, capsicum, chicken. But like after a few weeks, by the time I walk in the shopping center, I could smell that, you know that meat smell? Of that course. Which smell? Of oh, course. Oh, 
there, did you like, like the smell or was no, you sick of it? Nah, dude, it was like, <laughs> you were doing it every day. As soon as I walk in, I, I, know, I knew what was ahead of me of eight hours of like yeah, the smell. Yeah, okay, like, it triggered you. Yeah, okay, yeah. I get it. And yeah, then yeah. I was like, but you know, I was like, fuck it, like our family needed money, you know? My sister done the same thing when we moved. So we were there for six months. Yeah. And my mom was like, fuck this. And I was like, fuck this. She headed there. Nothing was happening there. No work again. Nothing was happening. He's not doing his course anymore. Now he's just trying to find a job. He's broke. Everything's gone fucking sideways. Yeah. Um, and then you go, you know what? Let's go to Sydney. Sydney, it's more like, same like Rio, same temperature, you know, kind of vibe. More bit of like nightlife, a bit of more, you know, beachy and things like that. Came over here. My mom loved it. She goes, you know, like, I really enjoyed this place. We stayed at this um, Brazilian family's house for like six weeks, man. They let us stay like in the lounge room. That's like, nice. It was so nice of them. We never met these people in our life. Wow. I don't even know how my dad like came in contact with them. Maybe someone referred him to him. Like mm. there's work there in Sydney. This whole time, me and my sister we were still not studying, and then um, moved here to Sydney. So we've already been in Australia for twelve months now, and then um, man, believe me or not, I started when I moved to Sydney. I went straight to year ten. So like we missed out. So I missed out. So I done half of year eight. I missed out the other half of it. Yeah, I miss out on whole year nine. Like, yep. didn't, and then just I, when I got enrolled, when I went to like start school, I got enrolled into year ten. My sister, my dad had no money, and he goes, "Look, it's it's pretty much like one of it's either you or you." It wasn't like a favor or anything, mm. but like maybe it was the younger, and then she was already a bit older. She could like work, and then like, and that was so I went to JJ Carl um, Memorial High School in mascot. So they in year 10. But you'd skipped a year and a half of I education. A year and a half. And then yeah. I went straight to year 10 and they're like, they didn't ask for like, <laughs> there's no documentation in this area. There was no, there was no <laughs> test to see no, whether no, you were no, qualified to. Even it wasn't like, they didn't ask even for like, <laughs> where the money neither. Because I, I didn't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, it started straight to year 10. Yeah. Um, so you're in year so 10 and your sister's not, it's not no more school no, at all. No more school at yep. all. She's yep. not. At, at, we live in Wallow Creek. Mm -hmm. That's why Wallow Creek used to be like nothing there. It used to be just a few flats. Yep. Now you go to Wallow Creek. I don't know if you know Wallow Creek, but now it's a full on like, it's a new little city there. Yes. But back then it was like nothing there. Yeah. And there was a cafe there, still there. And my sister was working. She found a job there because we were just living in those flats. So she was like, walk five minutes work and she'll help out with the rent. At the time, I was doing like deliveries, working, you know, truck drivers or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, and um, and I was studying. I was in high school. <laughs> Lucky me. <laughs> Sorry, sis. <laughs> but yeah, and, um, and but still struggling a bit with English, oh, right? I'm struggling, man. Yeah. So like, and then there's you know all the boys from JJ Carl and the, all the girls. They're all so helpful, man. Like you know everyone. I still could not speak English at all, mm. and then, you know everyone's so patient, so so patient. Like they took me in, like I was their own, you know. So like by then. But then I was about 17, sorry, 16, so I had my L's. Yeah, and then I got my P's. Yeah, I was still there. Um, I dropped out in 11 because I started at 11 and then they started talking about HSC. This, everything just about HSC. I'm like, man, fuck this. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to like, because now suddenly now, they're like, you can't drop out at school here in year 10. I don't think, in Brazil, it's not a thing. Like, yep. in Brazil, you you go to your, like university, especially like either there you either poor or you're rich or you try to be rich or you do give everything you have to try give the education to your kids. You know what I mean? Right. Here, it's, here you can drop out of school in year ten and you can do laboring a few weeks if you're smart enough to start your own little business. You're set. Yep. Your own little business, you're earning good money. You know here. So there, you're saying like, there you're really encouraged to continue with the education right there, through to university. That it's like. I don't know anyone that they're like, if you don't go to university there, you don't do all these things to get into university, you pretty much, you have no career there. Mm. Like it's either one or the other. Yeah. You're fucked. Yeah. Okay. So when I came here, I started realizing, I was like, I can't, I can't, I don't need, I don't need to stay in school and keep studying. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't the smartest person anyways. But did you have That's a feeling honest, of like, what you, what you would want to do if nah, you weren't in school? Yeah. Nah, I had no idea. Till like till not long ago as well, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Yeah, was just like I've done heaps of laboring, man. I've worked, I've done like every single little thing you can think of as in laboring, like back then. Like was just 
Like, you name me, you know, I give a crack at everything. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty, Brazilians, they're pretty hard workers. Yes. Yeah, so, like, and I don't mind, I don't mind working, I love working, I love hard work. Like, you know, it's, it's good. I don't know, I don't mind that I'm that type of person. But, yeah, and um, so I just always worked. And then, um, sorry, I'll go back a bit. So, in 2007, that's when I met my wife, and Nico. And then, so, I was 17 back then. I could barely speak English as well. Like, Where'd you meet her? Uh, so, I met her at a party. Um, so I was going to JJ Carl and I had, you know, all my mates from there, all my mates, you know, they're from, um, around East Lakes, you know, all my boys, they're from East Lakes to Maruba to La Perusa, heaps of my brothers from there as well. Yeah. Um, so that's where I grew up, you know, around these areas and that's where the boys took me in as a family. And so when got, to, when I was 17, as soon as I turned 18, I moved out of home. I couldn't, my mom and dad just split up by then. And I was like, I couldn't, I just wanted to do my own thing. I just wanted to work and I uh, have my own little place. So I live I used to live with my good friend Sarah. Um she's she was like that's how I met my wife was through her. Was at yep. her party. Yeah. And I was living at their family house, you know, just renting our room and then just working, you know, doing my thing. And yeah, and then um I started just, you know, I start like my mom and dad they had to go back to Brazil. Um because for visa issues. So like mm. for them to apply for the permanent residence visa, yep. they had to leave the country and apply from there. But yeah. me and my sister, for some reason, because we split up from their visa, we could stay here and apply from here. So my sister, she's my sister, she's a citizen. She's a citizen, citizen now and everything. She's yep. like, my she works at the hospital. She's like, she does X rays. She's like my sister. She's if me and my sister, we look the same, but like mentality, Completely you different. think like mm. there's no way that you guys are brothers and sisters, and we only like. Not much apart, you know. We think completely differently. Like we argue over things. They're like, should be like, you know, some, say some things that I don't agree with. They're like, that I know. I've been there. I know these people. Like, don't you can't say, you know, like. Yeah. And then we we'll argue, and then we we'll just say completely, completely different things. Like she's completely against drugs, completely against all these things. You know, she won't even speed. I remember I called her from jail once, like off a off a burner, because I didn't have money on my jerky, and I was like, I need to see if she comes to visit. And one of the boys said, let me burn that. And I was like, quick call to go, sis, are you coming tomorrow? What are you calling? Huh? Who's this? Oh, it's me. She goes, <laughs> she's full groovy. Hey, calling, hey, calling me. After. She goes, you know, it's against the law. Hung up on me. Oh, my God. Man, visit next day. I was at Windsor back then. <coughs> and it was minimum six class. So. And the visa next day, it was a two hour visit. The whole visit, I nearly walked, I nearly walked out because she was just hammering me. You're here to learn. How dare you? Blah, 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 blah. Like, she's that type of person, mm. you know? Like, God bless her, you know? She's doing very well for herself. Yeah. That took a very fine life. It must have um, been hard. Of, your, your poor, like, dad, you know, he wanted to come here. He had, he this, wanted, he he had, had good he, intentions the whole he, time. He had this he, dream. You know, he came here with really good intentions to have a really successful career as mm. a helicopter pilot. So many people that can fly helicopters, man. I'm telling you that. Mm. Like, he's, he's, took me, he's took me flying before, like, back in Brazil. It's like... It's fun as like, so. So they split hard. up. They split up when they were still here, or when they went yeah, back. So like, yeah. So and then went back to. So <laughs> as soon as we moved to Sydney, things were already rocky for twelve mm. months. You know, a lot of stress. Like mm. we're just fighting. You know, man. Once there's, you know, if things if use both partners are not there at the same on the same page, mm. and if one's down, the other one's giving too much. The other one's not giving enough. Or there's anything rocky. If if you go there for too long. The, it's going to be problems. And there'll, there'll be problems. Mm. And then like, you know, and then, yeah, and then and there, there was problems. And they, yeah, they eventually split up. And that's when, that's when I was living with my mom and my sister. And then that's when I was like, you know what? I want to, I'm, I'm not, I'm working now. I'm 18. I soon turned 18. Pretty much like, pretty much as soon as I turned 18. Yeah. I went and lived with my uh, good friend, Sarah. And yeah, and then, um, and then I was just doing my thing, working. You start, you know, hanging out, um, with the boys, you know, just running a mark on the streets. Yeah. You know, start partying, start drinking. I was like, man, this is fun. Super not speaking English. <laughs> and all the boys, it doesn't matter. You're drunk. Everyone's drunk. No one can talk. Like, yeah. <laughs> we all communicate. You're almost talking Lock the same shots. language yeah, at that point. Well, yeah, exactly right. You know, and then I felt, I don't know, I felt comfortable. Everyone made me feel comfortable. I met a lot of good, for solid good friends through that, you know, through that, through the party scene. But yeah. um, like I said, it was maybe everything just led up to this moment, you know, of knowing these people. And yeah, so um, they split up and then, like I said, um, I start, 
you know, that's why everything started going downhill. Yeah. And me and my partner at that stage, I had Marissa when I was 19. Yeah. And my partner was 18. Yeah. Still could not speak English. Mm. <laughs> wow. And um, yeah, and then Marissa was about 12 months now. And like me, uh-huh. and, me and my partner and Nico moved in together. In Hillsdale. Can you, um, ha, ha, what was it like when you first met, what was your partner's name? And Nico. And Nico. Yeah, well, she's ha- half well. Hungarian, half Aussie, but she's, she, like, she grew up here and she was born here and everything. But was there a language barrier even between you guys? <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. You ask her, like, they're, they're serious to this day. <laughs> so what did that feel but like yeah. when you first find out that she's pregnant and you guys, um, they've got to figure that out, but there's also a language barrier. That sounds like it'd be a very like, difficult, confusing time. It was, it was. Everything, everything was confusing back then, man. I was still, I was, I was like, I was a baby having a baby. Man. Yeah, yeah, of course. Pretty much I was a baby. You, you both, look, you both were, right? We both were, man. If you look at photos of us back then, I was literally like, I look so young, man. I could mm. not believe, when I told my friends that I was having a baby, because mm. I was such a party boy back then, mm. everyone they were, couldn't believe me. They're like, no, nah, no, you're not. There's no way. Mm. You, you're joking, right? Yeah. I was the first one out of my, all my friends to have kids as well. So Marissa, Marissa grew up with like, with all my mates, you know I me. Mean? She's very switched on for her age. She's very um, um, loves her phone. <laughs> but yeah, um, she's oh, really? very switched, yeah. She grew up because you know at the age we didn't have any friends that had kids or anything. So yep. she always grew up around the boys, around the girls. You know, like you know she knows she knows to go. But yeah, um, yeah, man. And then I start. We had a big falling out. Me and my partner. You know, we were so young and had a baby together. Yeah. And I'm just stupid and young in the head, partying and then like, and then fighting and then some arguments and then, and then we split up, right? And then my sister, so my mom and dad, they're back in Brazil then, because hmm. they, they, they had to leave to wait for the visa. Um, and I'm just partying hard. I'm just fucking, you know, especially after me and I broke up. Yeah, it's like, quite self-destructive. Oh man, I, like, like I was saying before, like, I either go hard or go home, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, if I like something, like, I'll give my full and, like, I'll, I'll, like, you know, it's just the person I am. I'm so, an addictive person. W- were, you dr- were you just drinking or were you doing drugs as well? I was drinking. So, I started drinking and then pretty much, like, as soon as I was in high school, it's pretty much started high school, year 10, you know, my mate offered me a pinger. He was like, hmm. you, want that, you want one of these? I was like, oh, she went half, you know? He's like, no, I think it was Yep. <laughs> yeah, man up. Yeah, yeah, and I'll never forget the day, man. Mm. We just we had you like uh, it was like a house party, and then we're just sitting. It was this girl Cassie. She always throw like little house parties, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's one of my good mates as well. And um, we just off chops. So we remember was was sitting like in um in the stairwell cases, and then just talking shit. It's like yeah, man. Like you know, like I love you, man. Like you know, just like I was, lo- I was like, whoa, what's this? Sounds like standard high on ecstasy chat, oh, right? Super just like I was, and then I was getting angry, I was crushing my like, man, I was like, <coughs> I was getting all the emotions, you know. And I'll go back again. Like, I came from a very good family. <coughs> my parents, they're like completely against drugs. I never grew up around it. I'm, I'll, I'll never forget the day my dad told me before I came to Australia, mm. Pedro, be careful. There's a lot of drugs there. I didn't like I didn't, I didn't really know. And then my, he's I didn't know Australia was known for that. I thought I was like I was actually having this conversation with my mate the other day. I was like, is it just here or like isn't this like this everywhere? Or and like nah, I think it's it's especially around here. There's a lot of you know, but like, and then I remember my dad saying that to me. He goes, just be careful. There's you know, and then maybe because he said that to me, maybe it was like, oh okay. <laughs> It's like you say, don't press a button. Yeah, like, to the opposite. You just got to press it just to see what happens, you know? Yeah. Well, you're right. We have a big big drug culture in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and plus, I was still finding myself. Mm. I was trying to, you know, fit myself in and, you know, like, I was still, you know, like, I, was, I wasn't socializing with my family anymore. Mm. You know, it was just me and the boys now. My sister was traveling for six months. So after my parents went away. Uh, my sister was traveling for six months. She went uh, went all over Europe and stuff. And me and my missus broke up. I found myself on the streets. Mm. I was hopping like couch to couches. Um, me and my best mate, um, P.Y., Josh P.A., so I'll come back to him. Um, yeah, and then like just hopping, um, just 
would have been a tough time, man. I mean, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> it would have been a lot of mixed emotions. You've got yeah, it was. family like, that are living, uh, had, they've had to go back to Brazil. You've got, yeah. a, you've got a child, you've split exactly. up from your partner, yeah. you're and living I family in it, bed no, to bed. I, I find myself with this new family. <clears throat> I call them my, my Aussie family, you know. And they took me in. Mm. Um, P.O.'s mum um, took me in. Michelle, she took me in like, I call them my Aussie mama. Because she, she took him like a son, you know. And he took me in like a brother. And um, we just walk around the streets and then like, you know, just, he was my full on brother. Like he was there for me every step of the way of everything, you know. And yeah, and then, but it got to a point that I was so lost in like, here, because I didn't have my parents here or anything, that my Aussie mama, she was just like, I'm sending you back to Brazil, you know, like, I'm sending you back to your family. <coughs> um, when she said that, um, pretty much, just, yeah, I was like, she's like, that's your Pedro, enough is enough, you know, but I was so far gone, man, I was so far gone, I was just at the age that like, I couldn't, there's no one that could tell me what to do, I had to kind of see myself, you know, that's what like, I tried to tell people now, like, there's only so much I can say and do. And don't get me wrong, I'm no angel. Like, I'm no angel. Mm. I still, I try to do my best. I still have my relapses here and there. Like, you know, I always, but I always do my best. Like, I'm trying to, you know, do better for myself. And um, I've definitely have turned crime down 100%. Like, that's, that, that leads nowhere. Even if you're doing crime in, doesn't matter how much money you're making, whatever, you're gonna end up in jail sooner or later. Yep. And then you're going to have a big realiza realization like, whoa. Was it who, worth it? And then who your real mates are, mm. who's a real family, you know? Like, yeah. um, a lot of you meet a lot of future people you, in your life, they think, you think they're your mates, you know, they'll come to visit in jail and like, grab your hand, look you straight in your eyes and like, and just lie straight to your face, you know? Yep. And it's that type of people that you, you make, makes you realize a lot of things, man. Makes a lot of things about life. You can change you as, a, you as a person. You can look differently at people when you go things like go through things like that. But um, I try to motivate people, and but there's if they're gonna do one thing, they're gonna do it. I, I always try to tell you know Marissa, she's going through high school right now. She's at high school, you know. There's I always try to say me and my partner we always worry about her because you know we know it's getting at the age they're like it's time to go out. We don't know we can't watch what they're doing. You know, there's only so much you can say. There's only so much you can tell. There's not so much I can say to them. Yeah. But I know myself, I came from a very good family. My parents were very against everything. Man, I wasn't allowed to sleep outside my house, even when I had my girlfriend, she was 18 years old. Like, till like this, I was like, I'm moving out. Like, my mom, I could go out, I could <laughs> uh, go out. Like, yeah. like, no matter what I'd done, I had to come back home to sleep. Even if I rocked up home at three o'clock in the morning, she always makes sure, that you, you make sure you come home. Yeah. I only slept out once, one time, that's that, like, that was with my partner when we like stayed at our friend's house. Yeah. But like, and that was it. And they're like, they're like I said, I came from a very strict family, but I still done whatever the fuck I wanted to do. Yeah. I Man, we should get on the, at school. We should go to the school toilet and get on the, like, you know what I mean? Like, any excuse, like, you can't, end of the day, you can only tell someone things and encourage them and show them, teach them their, what's wrong and what's right about it. Yeah. But, yeah. There's only so much. Yeah. Only, yeah. Some some people. Uh, I'm some the same. People, yeah. I, you, that you you have to learn a lesson, a hard lesson yourself, because there's nothing someone can say that's going to teach it for I mean, you. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so how do you feel when you're getting told by your Aussie mum um, that she wants you to go back to Brazil, and you're thinking no fucking way, like you, you that you didn't want to do that at all? I I, I did want to do it because I was like, <coughs> yes and no. Because I mean, it got to a stage that I did want to leave because. I realized I fucked up. Yeah. And that's when. What? Like, because you because you split up with your partner? No, no, no. That's when like, so once I found myself lost and she took me in and then got to a point that she's like, Pedro, I can't help you anymore. I'm trying to do, you know, everything. And then, and then, you know, she just said to like, let me go. Like she goes, I've tried, she tried to help me as much as she could. And I was just, I, I just didn't want any help. Yeah. And then I went in done. So what was that like? Well, at that point, were you just doing, were you drinking too much? Were you just partying too much? Man, you were just a mess? I was, I was just a mess. I was taking a lot of drugs and I was putting myself in a lot of debt. Mm. Um, and that's where it led up to my crimes. Yeah. Um, what was racking up the debt? Was it just drugs and alcohol or gambling just, or what? No, I never been a gambler, eh? Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I love like slapping a 50 in the pokies. Yeah. 
but it's never been I'm thankful I'm thank God because like I already had not, enough, enough addictions back yeah. then. You know? <laughs> All right, so but so it was just so, from like, part, just, parting debts. Parting debts. Yeah. Uh, recreational drugs. Yep. Cocaine, fingers. Yep. Mushies, whatever, whatever. We're just parting with during the week. Yep. Don't get me wrong. I worked hard during the week. Have most Mondays off. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, like, but, but your spending was exceeding your income. But all my income is going, yeah, I'll pay my rent. I'll just, I'll barely just have money for food. <laughs> if, and then, and then just drugs. Yeah. Um, and then it got to the stage that I, I lost my job because I couldn't keep my job, man. I, I, you know, even though I was a hard worker, but I'll be there Friday or weekend. I'll, I'll come mm. to like, come to Monday, Tuesday, and I'm like, I won't rock up, rock up late. This and, that, and then I lost so many jobs over that. So it takes its toll, right? It takes its toll, man. You know, like, but I'm I'm a good worker. I give good, I have good intentions, but like, doesn't matter, man. Like, if you're, you're fucked on a Monday, Tuesday, especially Tuesdays as well, terrible Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then doesn't doesn't matter how, how good you are, man. You're not gonna. Yeah, it doesn't matter what your intentions are. If you've exactly. been if you've been exactly. fucking yourself up on drugs for days, exactly. no one's exactly. gonna be no, no one's, one's gonna, gonna, gonna be a good be, employee. Yeah. No, mm. no one's gonna be a good employee. Mm. There's doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. And yeah, and then so so, you got to the stage. I had no job. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a relationship. You know, I lost I lost all that. My parents weren't here, so I didn't have a home. I was hopping couch to couch. And then I owed one of my good mates it was about like six and a half k or something. Mm-hmm. And then it got to the stage that he was like, "Man, like I need the money." Like and I was like, "You know what? Fuck it. I want to do this." And then I ended up doing the arm robbery yep. at the um, at the Malabar Golf Course. And man, and so what went? I mean, what was the planning that went into that? Was it just like, all right, I'm just going to go do this tonight, or did you, you know think what? about I'm it for a couple of days? With you. I'm going to be very honest with you. <coughs> there was in court, we were just like we were fucked up on drugs, this and that. Mm. I don't remember anything. I mean, you got to play the game when it comes to court, you know. Like they they, they play you, you got to play them too. Um, so that's why a lot of rehabs, there's a lot of like loopholes. People just, oh, I'm going to go rehab. But like, you just so you don't go to jail. There's like, yes, of course. Day, you know so I mean? many guys are trying to do that. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, and um, so I was like, man, so yeah, that was, I was completely sober. I was completely sober. I just, I needed the money. This person was my good mate. And, and I felt like I was shit going him hard now, you know. And you couldn't. Up his. Yeah. You, and, and you had no jo- you had no job. You'd run out. You'd just no run job, out of man, I options. So, so I have no job. I have I couldn't see my daughter anymore because I'm just fucked up. I'm just a fucking mess. Who let you see the daughter when they're a fucking mm. mess anyways? Yeah. No mom's going to let that. Yeah. Um, I'm a mess. I haven't got my family here. My mom there in Brazil. And I'm just completely fucking mess. And then, yeah. And, yeah, and I had a genius idea. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get myself out of there. I'm going to do this thing. You know, I'm gonna try to be a fucking little mac kind of like. What? Why, why did you choose a golf? <laughs> why did you choose a golf course? Because, because like, <laughs> it was just, it was near the area. Yeah. It was, it was just this back street there. They were just like, I don't know. I just looked at her. Just looked at her. Someone mentioned something to me about it. I was like, man, why not? Because you know, because <clears throat> they have a pub there. It's like, so they have like pokey machines and everything. You know, mm-hmm. like they got the the, the clubhouse. Yep. And we're like, fuck, we can scoop a bit of money from the pokies. There's always people paying pokies. Yeah. And then we didn't like scope out for long. We didn't even scope it out at all. But we just thought about it. And we're like, what about Thursday night? I, was, I think it was, it was a Thursday night. Like, you know, people get paid on a Thursday, whatever, just spend money in the pokies. So, man, completely sober. So it was just, it was a local, it was a local, it was easy local, option. Local, easy option, close to home. Nice little, if you can do a little sprint with two bags, quick little straight runway, like getting the kind and you're off. Like nothing could go wrong. It was like, man, I was like, I was like, we got this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so dumb. Was the person made, so that was a theory in your head. Yeah. And then, so, so tell me about how it actually went down. And then, and then, yeah. And then it went down as like, we got there. What and time? Like, what time was this? Late, late so like night. So it was late. It was, it was late. But like, what, what happened? I think they usually close like at ten or something. But like, there was a group of people that stayed back that night, mm. and it must be locals or regulars or something. No, mm-hmm. and um, I was like, I'm just going. I'm going to my Kobe. Fuck, like you know, they're meant to be closing this by now, and we're like, fuck, we'll wait. So we just went ahead, like side wall, we're like we're gonna wait till the guy closed everything until he walked to his car. How were you feeling? Were you, were you stressed? I was stressed. I was stressed. I was very stressed, but I knew I needed to get done. Mm. That's the thing. Like, 
I was just in that mentality at the time. That was like, I need to get myself out of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait for her. <laughs> so we done it. The guy walked, they finally everyone walked out. The guy walked off, walked, he was about to walk to his car. This idiot that I knew, he gave me a fake gun. Thank God it was fake. Um, yep. And um, and my colleague had a knife. Yep. And yeah, and um, put the gun to him, was like, come back in. I go, he even said on the brief, he goes, man, this is the, I'm robbers, they're so polite. Because I was going like, I'm not here, look, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to do anything. Like, it's not your money. We're just here to take the money and go, I wouldn't want to hurt you. Like, we're not going to hurt you. We're not going to hurt you. Like, yep. we made sure that, like, he didn't want to feel, but obviously someone got, it doesn't matter what you say, you're still going to freak out. Of course. Obviously, like, you know, but I still, still try to, like, be you, polite you're, about it, you know you're, what I mean? But you're, you're not, yeah, you're not it trying to hurt anyone. Really, you're yeah, trying yeah, to. I'm actually, like, I'm, I'm actually a nice guy. I'm not, like, I don't think I'm, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, like. You're still a human being. You just I, wanted to yeah, get the cash, right? That, yeah. Exactly right. And then, like, and I just needed that money, man. Mm. And I was just in that mentality at the time. And then, you know, after I got the money, got away and everything. Everything went to plan, you know. Everything initially went to plan. Apart from my colleague hitting, like, he was in the safe and he must bump into, like, so every safe they got, like, a inside alarm. <coughs> They're, like, I think it's a stress alarm if someone gets locked in there. Yeah, okay. He must have bumped into it. Anyways, the thing starts going off. The whole siren starts going off. By then, we're already, like, we're pretty much, like, ready, like, nearly ready to go. It didn't take long, man. We're there for, like, maybe not even a minute. He bumps, and then I'm like, this comes, he said, he, I'm thinking he put the wrong, the wrong code in. I'm he like, think fuck, I'm like, I mean, I'm like, you fucking set the alarm off. You, you put a fucking code in wrong in. And then, and I'm like. That would have scared the shit out of I'm him. I'm like, blah, blah, come on, let's go. I'll go. Uh, man, what? My heart was just pounding. I was like, I go, no, everything is coming to an end. I go, I'm getting done. Mm. I go, I feel like this is going to go like, everything's going to smell. I was so confident, you know? And I was like, shit, I was like, fuck it. We still got the bags, so I'll go, let's go. I remember I got to the stage running for the golf, the golf, uh, the golf course, like putting greens. These bags are so heavy, man. <laughs> they, I didn't realize how heavy they were. We had to each, and it was all the perkies, all the each like we didn't get all the money out. We got all the actual things. So if you open the perky machine, they got like the actual like things. The canisters. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we fill the bags up with them, like so. Man, I have to feel that. Oh, the right. Bag. So a lot of the weight is not cash at all. It's, no, yeah, it's, it's just teens. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. all yep. teens. Because mm. like, the alarms <coughs> are going off. So like, we, like, we're like, fuck, let's, let's go. We just grabbed like, all the poking teens and then like, we didn't even try to go, like, you know, look, suss out anything else. Because the guy, he was already tied up on his chair. Like, he was like, we've like, we got all this whole place to ourselves. So we can sit here and have a beer if we want to. Mm. Or would that, like, cruise, you know? And then. In theory, before in the theory, alarm, before the alarm started then, going. And the alarm started going. And then I started trying to smash this door with the bag. And my colleague goes, oh, you idiots, the door's open. So, like, the front, the actual front door when, when we came in, like, mm. when he put the code in, the door was still open. I thought the whole thing just locked down, and I was like, I start freaking out. Yeah. And he goes, oh, the door's open. I'm like, oh, fuck. So, we're running through this golf course, man. And I was like, I remember looking at his bags. I nearly dropped. I was like, I'm just going to keep running. I don't want to get done. But I was like, oh, I came this far. I'm not going to let it go. So, fucking got through the golf course. Me and him jump in the car. We're out. And then we're like, and then I remember, man, that was the best feeling at the time. Yeah. We're like, <laughs> we like, we opened the, like, we're counting the money, it's like counting the money, we're like, freaking, the, flowing in the air, and we're laughing, you know, and we're like, should we get a bag? A bag, you know. So how, mu how much cash did you get? We're not getting about 10,000. It wasn't much at all. No, oh, like fuck. Only, only 10 grand. It was only 10 grand. Oh, my God. We thought we would have got at least 50. Yeah. If I knew I was going to get 10K, there's no way I would have done it. Yeah. I thought I was going to get at least 50, you know. 25 each, 20 each, whatever. At least 20 yeah. each. I'll be having 20 each. I'll pay my 6 and a half k there. I'll still have 10K to party. That's all my mentality. Yeah. Um, You know. But between, by the time you split it, like you've, it's only 5 grand for you. So, yeah. <laughs> By the time you buy a few fucking, you know, it's all gone. <laughs> you can't. So you, like, so the budget so, wouldn't. So the, the whole reason I done this, the whole main reason I done this, mm. sober, full of stressing about this whole thing so much, that made me do that, and all it took was that, just one little, bump, mm. and then oh yeah, fuck, let's go to Pokies, and then we just have meals, have laugh, having laugh, man, and then so it was the first day that we done it. You got to Monday. On that night, I don't know. I even mentioned my man. I go, I got your coin. Yeah. On Monday, we went to Grand Debt. So we've blown all the money 
I didn't see my mate. We blown all our money hmm. and we teeth up more and we took her in debt. And then that's when yeah. we looked at each other and we just go. How could it all go so wrong? I remember we were working, we were working up because we went to sleep at this, at this girl's house <coughs> after the big band I finished, you know. Follow me back. And say, yeah, you know, fucking. What a dickhead. What a fucking idiot you are back when you know you don't. You just don't realize things when you're. You ended up in a bigger debt than if you hadn't done the robbery at all. Man, <laughs> yes. And like, so now this guy, so now uh, from a good person, you know, from a person that I just look at as a good friend and I shoot got him hard because, you know, because of drugs changed the person who I was. So now I've got this guy that's not, I've lost a mate now and now this guy hates me. Now he wants me. So now like, so now i got beef. Now i got no house and i got nothing. You know, I mean, and I'm in debt, and we ticked up, and now I'm dev. Other people, other people as well, like more people, mm. not just one person, one man. And yeah, and then just me and my colleague just look at each other. We just like, I remember we woke up, people just looked at each other. We just like, oh, just like, what have we done? What the fuck? And we just walk up and down from the beach, like all the way to his house. Um, he was there. And he, he, he was seeing this chick that was living, living down River Beach. And, and he, was, he, he asked her to, like, let me stay on her lounge because um, by then, you know, I just had no, like, no to stay. Yeah. And, yeah, and then me and him, we pretty much just came down the days. And then as as them days are going, so, like, we got away the night, go away, it's been a week now. And then I ended up finding out on the papers, yeah, like, bags got found. Um, my car was meant to throw the bags off the cliff, of my cliffs. And then, like, I was it was rainy. It was a rainy day. I don't know. The bags didn't make it off the cliff or something. I don't know. The council worker found the bags or something. Something like that. I'm like, how council workers found bags down the cliff, you know? What the fuck the council worker doing there? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, man, we end up going, we'll get down. We'll go down for us. So they set up a strike force a couple weeks after it happened. And then it took them about six weeks. They tapped our phones. Now they've, they've, and then we knew our phones were tapped. By then, we're saying, we knew they were listening to us and then we're talking on the phone, but like, fuck you, like, yeah, come grab us, like, blah, blah. We're just like, man, I have no home, right? So I'm sending like, I'm sending on mine going back, going to jail right now, because like, I'm fucking, I'm going to get fed three times a day there now. Your, your you life I mean? is such a mess. Yeah, I'm you were so, just, you're so preferring like, to get man, arrested. I'll yeah. never forget the day I got locked up was kind of relief, because I knew it was coming, because mm. we're following up, start following up things on the newspaper. Or, you know, Shark Force closing down on them, blah, blah, blah. So right now we're just like, we're just waiting for that day. We knew it was going to happen. And I'm trying to leave the country at the same time. Mm. I'm like, I'm fucking out of here, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't make me in time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dad actually bought me plane tickets. What a stressful what a stressful time yeah. of your life, man. What a mess. Yeah, man. And then I just found myself on, on the fucking bus to Silverwater. Mm. And then I'll never forget. I was like, I was just sitting on the bus and I was just thinking, what the fuck? You know what them Joe buses are like, man? Mm. That's when reality hits. When you like, when you see the outside and you see the little like, you know, the little bars and you just like handcuffed, everyone's handcuffed, six, six of yous, you know, in their little fucking thing or eight of yous, whatever, fucking if you're 10 of yous in there or whatever, you know? And then everyone's in there and I'm just like, oh, fuck, this is fucked. And I'm thinking a lot about my mom then, you know? Cause I know my mom, she like, she was struggling a lot. She was reaching out to me. She knew I was fucking up hard. She knew I'd done something wrong here. She knew mm. I fucked up hard. Mm. And my whole life, my, my whole family knew it. They, they knew it was coming, no, I think. It was just a matter of time. The yep. way I was going, everyone, everyone that looked at me, they're like, it's just a matter of time. You're either going to be dead or you're going to be in jail or who knows. Yeah. And yeah, man, and then um, it was kind of a relief when that happened. And yeah, I ended up getting four years and two months. I done two, two years, two months, non-parole period, and two years parole. Yep. And yeah. Where'd you spend most of that time? Most of my time, because, so once I got locked up, I was like, I'm not playing for bail. Man, I'm like, so now my mentality is like, I have a roof, like I'm eating, now I'm eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, and I'm off the drugs, right? You got a bed, you don't have to worry I about rent, bed, yeah. And I'm off the drugs. Mm. Like I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was going it wasn't right. I knew and then man, if I got away with that, I would have kept doing it. I would have kept doing it and maybe instead of me doing four years, two months, 
I could be doing 10 years. Because mm. I wouldn't have stopped. I got to, if you get away the first time, you're not going to stop. Especially the mentality I was back then, like, drugs, drugs, party, party. I, wouldn't, I wasn't going to stop. Well, so particularly, I'm glad, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad everything happens for a reason. I, I'm a big believer Particularly in that. when that first time it dug you into an even deeper hole, right? You were even you oh, made even bigger debt. Exactly you right. Think, it oh. was like I was already, in my head, I, I already knew what was going to be the next one. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it was, there was no... You, it was no, there was no comeback for me. So I'm glad everything happened Were the you, way it happened because everything happened. Did you have any open communication channels with your uh, partner at that stage? No, at that stage, we just like no communication at But all. did she knew that you got oh, pinched? I, did she knew about oh, that? Oh, she, yeah. She, yeah. So like, because we're still in the same area. We still have the same friends. Okay. So you know, she knows so that shit had gone knows, down. She knows what's going on. She knows everything that's going on. Yeah. She literally knows everything that's going on. And like, yeah, and fucking, <coughs> and, and I'm not seeing my daughter. So by then, I haven't seen, when I got locked up, I already haven't seen Marissa for four months, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. Because we're already broken, we're broken up for a bit. Yeah. Just like, you know, just running wild. And then after I got locked up, I didn't see Marissa until she was 18 months. I never knew she was coming to visit me. My partner surprised me. So not, well, my partner surprised me. And then I remember just walking in. I thought just gonna, so this was the first visit I was ever going to have with my partner. Mm. First time we're ever going to speak after we haven't spoken, we've been in wars for like six months. Mm. And then I thought she's going to be hurting her and her dad. And I walk out of visits and Marissa's there. And then she's like, she goes, Daddy. And I, I didn't think she would have remembered my name. Mm. You know what I mean? I was like, well, she still remembers me, you know, like. How did that make you feel? Man, when I was walking out, I remember when I was walking out back to the yard, it was the best visit I've had in my life, I was walking out like, because all you think back then, you know, I was always thinking back then was my daughter. And now it was his best visit ever, man. I just felt like all my problems were just kind of just, just relieved for, 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 for a little bit, you know? And yeah, but um, when I got locked up, just to go rewind a bit, and I was at Silverwater, I was at Darcy. Darcy. Mm. It, Darcy's dark, it's a dark place there, mm. man. So Darcy, for the people that don't know, it's, um, when you first get locked up, it's where you go to like get off to what do you call it? Like, to get off the get off the drugs to yep. um Re uh, uh, what's the name for it? Uh, detox. Detox. Yeah, it's yep. like a detox yep. pod. Just move the microphone just a slight bit. Yeah, closer, so yep. it, it's a detox pod. Yeah, and like so, it's people screaming out throughout the whole night. It's people coming off the gear, people coming off whatever, you know, coming off and they're getting locked up. Heroin, so, ice, heroin, whatever. Heroin, ice, yeah. whatever, you name it. And so your first night in jail, you need to go through the Darcy before you get, you know, you go you go out to the pods. And then, you know, sometimes you're there for, you're only there for a day, two, I was there for two days. My colleague was there for one day. Um, some people are there for a week. If you're super fucking, yeah. you know, you can be there for longer. But yeah, I remember waking up, the first night I was there, uh, I woke up the night and my mom came to my head. And I thought to myself, what if my mom kills herself? Mm. I just woke up out of nowhere, man, during the night. And it was the first thought that came to my head. What if my mom kills herself? And then like, and then like, I just like, I just sat on her for a bit. Because I knew she was in the very best stage, you know, before when she left here. And um, well, yeah, when you're really depressed, you think everything's going to go wrong. Mm. Literally, like, she got to a stage in her life that she wouldn't leave her house. She wouldn't leave her room. My dad's trying to go, trying to go back to America back then. He's like, fuck Australia for now. I have family in America. My mom's super sick. Like, sick as in, like, depression. Yeah. And he goes, I'm taking to America. So they lined up at the council, like, to go to, like, to speak with the people. Because you've got to have an interview in that for apply for a visa. Yeah. She shit herself. She goes... No, 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 nothing's gonna, it's not going to work out. They're going to cancel it. It's going to look bad on the visa for Australia if we're applying to go to America and they cancel it. Mm. And it's just going to look really bad on us. So shit herself. My dad goes, I'm, I'm still going to go. So they, they, they're broken up. They, they're still broken up because they had to leave the country together. Mm. And my dad realized how sick my mom was when she found out she had to leave. Yeah. So she stayed with her, you know, like to look after her. And then, yeah, and then... um. And then now I remember waking up at Darcy and just thought to myself, you know, fuck, what if she kills herself, you know? Because this could push her, this could push her over the limit. Because my mom was she was super protective. Mm. Like she loved me and my sister. Like she would kill for us, man. Like that's I think that's like any parent would, you know, would do that. Like, but 
she really used to go like, it's mum, mum, mum's mum, you know? Yeah, and then um, a few days go go by. So next day I walk out, I see my Koi. I was like, no way, like you're here, you know? So we pretty much done our whole time together. And then For anyone who doesn't know, Koei is a co-defendant, co-accused, Yeah, right? he's a co-defendant, yep. so he's the person that I've done the crime with. <coughs> it's the co-defendant of your crime, yep. Paul Koei's. Um, and yeah, <coughs> and then I see him out there, I was like, we'll, we'll sell it up together, we're in the foyer. It was me, him, uh, my brother boy, Waki, um, he's, he's, you know, doing his time now, much love to him. Um, and, and, and our brother, Angelo. And yeah, we're in the foyer, in the foyer at Civil War, I don't know if you've been to Civil War before, man, and us four, we just like, we got along like this. We just made these two blokes, they're from our Druid. Me and Macaulay, and, and then we so we're in the foyer. Man, we're taking on the walls, we're laughing all night, we're playing cards, we're like, we're having pillow fights, we're full, like, full <laughs> kids. Pillow we're, fights? Boy, full of pillow, like, so these boys, <laughs> What's man. What's going on boy, in this, prison? Boy, these, boy, <laughs> these boys, they're like, they're solid staunch boys, you know. Yeah. They're in, they're in like for four AI each or something like. You know, they're in, they're, they're doing a big work, but like we, it's like we felt like we knew each other our whole lives, but yeah. it was the four of us at the same time. We just got this connection, you know. Yeah. And man, we just and all four of us we done it our whole time together. So back to where you asked me. Um. So I done most of my time in Park Lee. So I was like, man, I'm not getting bail. Mm. I like, I'm not. Yeah. But what's the point of even applying for it, right? If you were just like, I might exactly. as well just start my time yeah, now. Yeah. Um, but yeah. also it must have softened the blow to be doing time straight away with guys that you got along with, right? I imagine. Oh, man, 100%. You know, even having um, my colleague there with me when I first, I remember first walking out and seeing the pod because he got out of dice one day before I did. Yeah, because I thought a lot of time that they separate out guys when they, they're, they're, they're co-defendants. They yeah. Usually they, they usually separate it. Usually you're not meant to – I always heard that as well. Usually you're not meant to, you know, spend time with a colleague because you're not meant to talk about your, you know, things before court. Like Exactly you, right. Like, you know, especially set it up. We'll set it up for like – man, we'll set it up for like six months together. <coughs> Our first six months we were together the whole time. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you're right because I, th I thought that they, they didn't want you guys to be able to get your ducks in a row for, for court, right? Exactly yeah. right, man. And like – but – I think it was just, he was meant to be there with me mm. because um, after I got out of Darcy and then, you know, I see him there. I was like, you know, mad. Fuck, I've got, I've got a brother here with me. And yep. then win this fire with this other two mad, hectic, you know, the most fucking maddest boys I ever met in my life. You no, know, super fucking cool, cool boys, you know? Yeah. And then, and we're just having fun, man. I was like, fuck, I'm eating. And then we're training, you know, we're like, we're going to get healthy. We're going to get healthy. We're going to train. And we're gonna we're gonna fucking we're gonna turn our life we're gonna turn our life around, you know. We go like fuck, look at what we got ourselves into. Yeah. You can't get lower than that. I remember, you know, looking outside the window like going like like in your cell in your door, you got a little the little fucking thing you can Slops, pick through, yep. you know, yeah. And then you will look around and be like, What the fuck have I done? <laughs> How did like I can't get any lower than this? Mm. You know, any lower than this in your 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 in your own co uh, coffin. Yeah. Um and yeah, and then so I spent two days in the RC and then the second, the third day I seen, I went to, I was like pot 10, I think. See my Koei there. I was like, mm -hmm. fucking oh, I'm the, I'm with the mess with the four boys. And then my fourth day there, um, I get caught into the, just people of welfare. Yeah. And they, they go, Fernandez to welfare. I'm like, instantly my heart sunk. Instantly. Mm. And um, and then this screw he walks me in. He walks me into this room. And then there's this lady there. I think it was like this blonde lady, really nice lady. You know, usually welfare people they're like not nice ladies. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, they try like you know look after you things like that. Yeah, they seem a bit more compassionate. Than yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not they're not screws or anything. Like they they you know they like <laughs> they seem that you know they like help you out of getting things done. Sometimes you know. Nothing gets done sometimes, but they still there. They try their best sometimes, especially this lady. Spirit, I don't remember her name, but yeah. And then she goes, can you please sit down? As soon as she said that, I go, it's my mom, isn't it? And then she looks at the screw and then she goes, Pedro, please sit down. I go, it's my mom, isn't it? And then and then the screw he goes, Pedro, please sit down. And then I sit down and then I'm just boiling my eyes out. Before mm. she even said anything to me, I'm just shaking crying she's like i'm so sorry i'm like what happened and then she's like she jumped off the seventh floor fuck 
And you knew it ahead of time. Man, yeah. that time that I woke up in Darcy, mm. so so I got locked up on the 15th. Mm. She passed away on the 16th. Mm. And I think when she passed away, that's when I woke up. Mm. And I thought, what well, if I'm, you know, kills herself? Mm. But I didn't find, I thought she passed away on the 19th because I didn't get told for a while, you know, for a few days. Her birthday is, so that was the uh, 16th of August. Her birthday is on the 20th of August. <coughs> And then I didn't get told to like to the 19th. So I was like, you know, like I was like, man, the day before her birthday, you know. Mm. But then it's something that I think I'm always going to blame myself for it. Um, you know, maybe if, if, if I wasn't so stupid, they wouldn't have like, you know, gave her that little push over the edge. Even mm. though she was already sick then, you know, but yeah, something that I was, I'm just going to have to, doesn't matter how, how much people try to tell me. You know, it's uh, I know that that could have like it could have like contributed. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. if I was such an idiot back then, I could have changed. I think something. that's a pretty normal human reaction to think that. Yeah. Um, and I think all, all you can do, um, I think, is to just try and do the best you can moving forward, right? To be the best version of yourself. That's right. To make up for that's it. That's right. But you know, and then I done my time in. I got out. And then, um, so I got out. I didn't get my, my visa cancelled back then. So I did two and a half years, uh, two years, two months, whatever. Yeah. And I got out. I'm looking good. I'm feeling fit. Man, I trained the whole time I was in there, you know. I get out a good mind space. Yeah. With a lot of goals, you know. You do nothing but, but thinking that. I was reading a lot. I was training heaps. Doing heaps of boxing, heaps of pads. I got found love doing pads in there with the boys. Yeah, and and that's how I met everyone in there. I never had drums in there. Yeah. Um, because if you only have drums in there, man, if you tuck into drugs, yeah, you don't pay your debts. Yeah. Or if going around talking shit. Yeah. Which I never used to do. I just used to keep it to myself. No. And now me the boys training. I'll, I'll get along with every single nationality. If, everyone always asks me, oh, you know, you're from Brazil. You don't see many Brazilians in there. Mm. Or oh, back then, anyways. Yeah. I know what's happening now, but I I'll, I'll, I'll probably cross like two Brazilians in there, mm. and yeah, I just met you know I keep back heaps of the underboys, uh, Curry boys got along, always get along with the Curry boys, underboys. Man, at Windsor I was in the Lebo pod um, mm. before I got out. Like this went south, beat, beat the Bulldogs, <laughs> grand final, win the Lebo <laughs> pod at Windsor. It was it's me, it's the other <laughs> lad that went for selves, and the whole pod, everyone's going for the doggies, oh, right? Oh shit! Yeah. But like we're friends, you know, we're family. Yeah. Like it, like like I said, man, I get along, I get along with everyone. Like in front of me, I have a chat to anyone. You know, I'm a friendly guy. I'm a super mm. nice guy. You know, unless if you you know don't fuck with my family, like yeah, and then like this different thing. But yeah, I'm a super nice guy, man, and like. And I'm just, I just trying to move everyone. And then there's a lot of love in jail. That's one other thing that, like, really, like, I didn't think there was. You never hear about that, you no, know? Nah, um, man, you, you meet someone in there. Yeah. After your conversation you have with them, they'll be like, love your brother. Mm. And you'll be like, love you too, bro. Like, yeah. you know, like, I, everyone tells you, you know, there's a lot of love in there. I saw a lot of humanity in there. Yes. Particularly helping someone when you can see that they're going through yes. a tough time, they're struggling. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, also, yeah, exercise, I think, was just something which uh, was just, just cut through uh, cultural or racial shit. borders. Yeah. It was just everyone was mm -hmm. just, you could see, were trying to better themselves, right? And don't get me wrong, like, because I didn't really have nationality in there. Even sometimes if you're trying to do the right thing, train. But if you have a big nationality behind you, so like, let's say you're Anda or you're mm -hmm. Kuri or you're Asian and something is about to kick off mm. and – you got to back your nationality at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Yeah. I never had that because I never had that. There's no Brazilians in there. There's yeah, no you didn't have an army. South Americans, you know, there's no the Latinos. Yeah, not, yeah, you didn't like have an America. army to stick with. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, so like, you know, if there was drummers, if anyone that was really close to me, doesn't matter what nationality they were, mm. like, I'll be there down there with them, you know? Mm. That never, there was never, there was never no problem when it came to that. But yeah, um, there's a lot of love there, man. I met a lot of people that like, a lot of honest boys. Yeah, even though they're in there for doing wrong things, but boys with a lot of, like, different morals. There's a lot of guys that go to jail and obviously have similar experiences to you where they didn't have too bad a time, right? And so w there's not a huge disincentive to get out and stop doing crime. Exactly. But right. it sounds like for you, um, which is similar to me, was um, that you had a driving force behind you that was like, right, I, I can't be doing that again. That's right. I thought so anyways. 
Yeah. Like I said, I got out very strong minded. I was like, I knew what I wanted, you know? Yeah. But I think I still, I still didn't go through with what I had to go through. Back to partying, especially, man, I lost my mom in there the day after I was in there. Mm. And then after I lost my mom, I was still incarcerated for two years, two months. Mm. So like, I didn't really see anyone for two years, two months. I didn't, my dad was was overseas. My sister, you know, of, after my mom passed away, she came visiting and stuff. But it's like, you're already away from everyone. So it didn't really hit home. It really, really feel real that she, that she wasn't there. Yeah. Same starting to hear after I got out. And same start realizing, fuck, she's not here. Yeah. And especially, I'm still not allowed to travel, man. I'm still having been able to visit her, you know? And I feel like I won't be able to close that chapter till I'm able to get my visa and travel. And go visit and her. And see her mm. and, and, and live my peace with her. And then so, I reckon I'll be able so, to move so on from she's, So she's buried in Brazil? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. And then I got out. So I started partying and drinking again. Yeah, man. I'm trying to deal with my demons now, you know? My mm. own demons. Like everyone does. Everyone got their demons. But yeah, and then I thought, again, I didn't, what I went through, I didn't think was enough for me to realize, fuck, you know, drinking and taking drugs is not the best option. Yeah. And yeah, and um, after I was, I was out, I've been out for probably about a year now, so I'm doing my parole. And then I met my best friends, um, the twins, Jackson and Chloe, I'm, I'm at their, um, at the 18th birthday party. I didn't start this, man. I swear to God, like, people were like, you know, uh, to this day, I'm still gonna st stand by it. We got pro like, prov like provoked hard. Yeah. So a fight started. A fight started. So yeah. the girls they go downstairs to pick up one of the other girls, right? Mm -hmm. Man. So these boys they're in the penthouse. We're like level three, whatever. You can't access it. We're at the Maritons. We you can't access all the levels unless you have the you're unless you're on the level. Yeah. Unless you have the right access pass for it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So these boys we have very pretty girl like girl mates. All our girl mates, they're all very pretty girls. So these boys, you know, seen you know, a couple few pretty good looking girls on in the lift and they're just arriving as well to go to the to the penthouse. Mm -hmm. And like, oh girls, you know, come party with us, this star. Like, no, 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 we're here with our boyfriends tonight. No, 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 girls, come, come, come. They're like, no, no, we here, like we, you know, anyways, they follow the girls all the way to, they're like, no, 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 it's all right, we'll tell them to we'll, we'll all go party together, you know? Anyways, me and my friends, it's our 18th birthday, all mounted like on the floor. I'm like, me and my mate, Mozzie, just like on the floor, like mounted on the M, just talking shit, having the best time. Doom, 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 like, oh, I just, they bought, so the guy uh, that opened the door, it's his chick that, that walked in. And this massive guy and his mate. I opened my eyes and I'm like, and my mate's like, I hear my mate like breaching up, we're like, what the fuck are you doing here? Like, who the fuck are you? Kind of thing. And then, <laughs> And then this guy starts bridging. He's like, oh, I fuck walked your girlfriend's here. You think I'm gronk? You think I'm a gronk? Mm. And then and then I'm like, I'm simply stepped out of it. I'm like, I'm laying on the floor with my mate. I'm looking look at each other. We're like, this is a lot to take hey, in when you know. That's not your mates. What the fuck's going on here? Yeah, this is. And this guy is easy. Now he's, okay, now he's not at the door anymore. He's, he's inside our hotel room, man. Mm. Like, he came inside our hotel room and he's putting all of us on the gronk, saying, you all fucking gronks. I just got up and I just chinned him. Hmm. This guy was, he was so big. He just looked at me. His mate, his mate didn't want anything to do with her because it was heaps of us boys in the hotel room as well. Yeah. His mate didn't want, he goes, he goes, bro, let's go. What are you doing, you know? This guy was off chops, bro. Like he was on the, he was on the fucking on the pipe for sure. Like a hundred percent. I can't believe you, but you're on ecstasy. I, can't, but, but I, like, I would have a lot of trouble getting involved in a fight exactly, <laughs> on so ecstasy. Th but like, but this guy is like, but like now I'm in like defense mode. Mm, this mm. guy is inside. Our hotel room, yeah. like he's inside, he's inside my bubble now. Yeah, this guy just got inside my bubble, man. Like and he's <laughs> killing my vibe, you know. He's killing yeah. the whole vibe. Like he's putting putting all of us on the ground. So you've hit him, and did he go down? No way. <laughs> he just he just went like that, and I just remember he just like looked at me, he just grabbed me. It's kind of man. I'm not over exaggerating. He's massive. Threw me outside the room. My mm. man Miles just punched on him. Man, they punched mm. on all the corridor, like all the way down, all on cameras. His poor little mate gets jumped, like, because it's, it's heaps of those boys. And then they go, they go, they go back, they fuck off. Mm. I end up soccer kicking him right from the lift on the cameras. Because this guy wouldn't go down. My mate, it's, it's, a, it's a good fighter too. He, he's just, they, man, it was mad. They're having a mad fucking, fucking crack. All the way down the fucking corridor. 
And then this guy, he's just like, he's just on the floor. He's just, he's just raging. I'm like, this guy's not, he's not going to stop. So I just soccer kick him in the head. What nationality was this giant dude? No, against uh, nationalism and anything. A lot of my lebos, a lot of my mates are lebos. Yeah. But like, it, that's, you know, it was, it was, it was one of those, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> big, loves the gym, you know, yeah. this guy loved it. He loved his gym and he loved yeah. his steroids. Yeah. Yep. And he loves his pipe, I reckon. Yeah. As well. yeah, all right. I can picture this all now. Yeah, yeah. and he I was just kind super of guy horny. Before. He's like, yeah, girls, <laughs> and then and then he just seen those boys. Well, man, it was a few of us too. And then like, and then and then yeah, and it was like this guy, like he's off, he's off chops. Anyways, so they go back to the penthouse. We go back to a hotel room. We keep partying. Next minute, boom, boom, boom. We think it's the, like him with more them. guys. Yeah, it's a fucking, it's a cops. Mm. They fucking get thrown, my mate. They open the door, like he gets, he gets grabbed, he gets thrown, shot away. All police runs through mm. inside the thing. We're like, what the fuck's going on? We're like, fuck. In our time, like, you know how we're like, we didn't do anything wrong. Mm. It, we, we always, we even thought like, well, what if someone calls the police? Yeah, but like, what if? We thought that they. Well, yeah, it's like our, our hotel room, man. You like, defended yourself if against anything, this like, exactly situation. Right. Yeah, okay. So all of us ended up getting charged. Him and his mates end up going to court against us. Mm. My two other my two other colleagues for that charge, they they you know, they play you guilty and I just couldn't cop it, man. I was like, nah, I'm finding this. I had no law or anything, I was like, it was same like on the same day they done everything, you know. Then we go to try trial straight away. And then like and then the guy is there, they they're fucking like not the big guy, I still haven't seen that guy. I, hopefully I don't see him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the guy, hey, I recognize you, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. And his mate, the one, the one that didn't want anything to do with it, he didn't want to start the fight, he was there going against us on the stand. Mm. And I was like, but why did you, I'm trying to argue with this guy, why did you walk into your hotel room? And it, and the judge goes, look, bad enough, he goes, at the end of the day, because we got charged for free. Yeah. It doesn't, he goes, in small words, the judge goes, I don't give a fuck how this started. It happened in the public area. Mm. And there's, you know, it, you, that's instantly a free. Yeah. And I'm like, sweet, whatever. I got, I end up getting community service, I'll ICO, whatever. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm not fucking doing the ICO. It was like, I went to one day, I had to go to like Straf South Stratford Station or something and pick up like the rubbish. Yeah. And you had to do how many, 200, 300 hours? Man, I got like 250, 250 hours, I think. <laughs> yeah. And it was a Sunday. And, and and I had to do it on the Sundays, and it was like I went there. I was like I remember it was like during summertime or something. It was like I'm not fucking picking up rubbish because this kind of started a fight on us. If they came inside a hotel room at the end of the day, I still couldn't cop it. Even the judge said, "Nah, you it's your, your it's your fault." I couldn't cop it, man. I go, I'm not doing it. So you refuse you refuse to do the hours. It. Okay. So what happens once once you refuse your ICO, you breach your you get a breach of your ICO, which yep. is a pretty much like breach of parole. Yeah. You go back in for six weeks. Six to eight weeks, you get another chance. You go back to court, and then you speak to the judge again, and you get, you get given another chance to to restart your ICO. But when I went back to inside again after I breached my parole, I was on the run for six months. Once they breached me, yeah, I just dropped Marissa off to school. I don't know how cops. I was I wasn't driving my car or anything. I don't know what happened, but they pulled me over. As soon as I dropped it off, they pulled me over. Oh yeah, can we check your license? I knew it. I was like, I'm gone. I'm already, back, and not me and my mom were back together. You know, we, you know, we're moving on with our things. And yeah, and then I'm back inside. My missus, she got just pregnant at the time. She ended up having a miscarriage. And yeah, man, and then they canceled my visa. That's when Peter Dunn was, that's when, that's when she started happening, man. That's when they came with the 501s. So this is after you'd breached the, your so ICO? So I breached the ICO, yeah. and then, and then, and then, <coughs> And then they breach me, there's a warrant for my arrest. And I'm leaving back with my missus. Cops don't know where I'm leaving. They go, they rock up to my sister. My sister's back at the country, but then, you know, everything's back to normal. And yeah, and um, and so I'm on the run. And then I finally got put over. I was just kind of pretty much the same. I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. I had to deal with that sooner or later, but everything was going to move then. You know, I was back with my partner, spending time with my daughter. Yep. Everything was running smooth, you know? But it was just the wrong timing. Yep. And then, man, I got done. I got, got locked back up again. And the second time in there, I was like, it's like getting all them like flashes again, you know? And I think it was even worse, man. The second time was like, wow. 
Yeah, what we're thinking, like, how the fuck did I end up back here? How? How the fuck did I end up back here, mm. man? I got a lot of, like, um, um, yeah, a lot of flashbacks, like, you know, you know, thought about my mum again. Just all the things that happened at the start, at the first lagoon, the first time done time, it just, same start happening again, you know? Were you angry with yourself? I was so angry with myself. Yeah. So angry, disappointed, mm. you know, um, especially after, because... After the, the, the uh, words for my arrest was out there, I see myself going back into the good path, you know? Yep. Spend time with my daughter at the start. And then, yeah, I mean, and then I'm back in there, and then Peter Dunner, he's the head of the immigration, um, Department of Immigration. Yeah. Right now, he's like the security. He's, he's not he's not part of immigration anymore. He's yep. like the head of security or whatever. Yeah. Home and affairs, then, maybe? Oh, yeah. Home affairs. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Home affairs. And then, yeah, man, and then that's when a lot of, Boys from New Zealand, it's like in the porter. Everyone that so everyone that done time will do more than twelve months sentenced. Uh, they'll get the visa cancelled. Doesn't matter if you've been here, man. I met boys in Villawood, right? Mm. That they've been here since they're one years old. Mm. Because they're from New Zealand. If you're from New Zealand, you, you're permanent resident instantly. So if you're permanent resident, you're not a citizen, mm. right? If you're not a citizen and you do twelve months or more, you're going back to your country. They don't give a fuck if you got two kids, three kids. Mm. Who you are, they don't care if you've been here for 50 years, you know what I mean? That's when a lot of people try to tell me, he goes, Pedro, surely, man, you know, you got kids, this and that. like, surely, like, you're gonna, um, surely, you get your visa, you know? But, like, once I went to Villa Wood, that's what, that's um, what I'm coming to is like, that was my real reality check. Yeah, so what, so sorry, what happened when um, you got, you breached the ICO and then they pulled you over they and then, you over. And then, where, and then where'd, you, where'd you go from there? You yeah, went so to... straight back, so, and then I'm back to their uh, Cogra police station. Yeah. And then from there back to fucking like, what was it Central? The fucking, um, the police station. Central police district, sorry, Hills. Yeah, yeah. Hills, sorry, yeah. Hills. What a whole that thing is. That yeah, thing that's terrible. Get, like, was... That thing is not sweet. It's like, <laughs> no, it's nah. like a dungeon. You know, yeah. when we first got locked up, I thought there was jail. <laughs> I thought there was it. Yeah. I, I was like, I'm like no, no. I, do? I knew it was like a few years, you know, I'm thinking to myself, how the fuck am I going to do it? No <laughs> natural light. I had no, yeah, no yeah. natural light. You're mm. like, this it's disgusting. People yelling. There's like, one room, there's like 20 people in there. Yeah, you it's know? Like, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it gets, luckily it gets better when you go yeah. to actual prison, right? <laughs> but then, then, then there's dust and you're like, whoa, what's doing, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you got so you went to, to <laughs> Surrey Hills, then you went to uh, normal p- prison for a f- f- few weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I was only in for like four weeks. Yeah. And then I got I got a letter from immigration saying your visa's being revoked. Okay. And then did you and get... That's, s- and then, sorry, so that was from being a, uh, coming to, to Australia in the student visa... Um, so now I'm on a partner visa. I've applied for my partner for my partner residence for my for my partner for yep. my missus, yep. my wife. Yeah. So now I'm a, I'm on the bridging visa, waiting for my partner visa. So like that's what happens once you apply for a partner visa or any other visa, and you're waiting for your PR. You they give you a bridging visa because you can't stay in the country without a visa. You mm-hmm. can't. Yeah. So the bridging visa allows you to stay in the country to however however how long that takes for you to get a visa. In my case, I applied for the visa, partner visa, in 2011 through my wife. Right. So 12 years ago. And then I got locked up in 2012. Yeah. And then I think once you get locked up, they freeze the application. I got out in 2014. So and then I think it restarts again. And then I'm locked up again the second time in 2016, whatever, for breaching the ICO. Yeah. So they stop that thing again, and then they actually cancel my visa, right? So now... So now I go to court. So I'm still going to court for, to get my ICO back. But I already know, like, it doesn't matter what happens, the outcome, the outcome, I'm going to go to Villawood either ways. Yeah. I get my ICO back. They give it to me. They go, Pedro, we're going to give you your ICO back. But obviously I can't because I don't have a visa right now. Yeah. So instead of me walking out of jail, who's there waiting for me? Villawood's picking me up. Yeah. I don't even get a taste from the outside, nothing. Straight into the, straight into the van. Villawood can pick me up straight from... Um, John Maroney to, I think, got out from. And when you know that, I mean, do you have any sense of how long you're going to have to be in Villawood for? No, man. So, like, when I walked in there, I met boys that have been there for 12 years. Hmm. Um, so, I went straight into Blacksland, the Blacksland compound, yep. which is the maximum security 
part of the uh, Villa Wood. Okay. So when you think of Villa Wood, I was, I was thinking like families, you know, like. Yeah. But this was the maximum security pass. So like all the boys was, they was getting breached on the five on the five five oh one. Yeah. Um, category, which is your um under the your like your. Um, what do you call it? I've got a name for it. So it proves that your it's your character. Like it's a character, the character test, test thingy. You so, pass, so you got to pass like your your, your a character, your like character test kind of thing. So it's a prison. It's a prison within the v detention so, center. So, inside, right? so yeah. So it's inside the detention center for people that has no visas, but mm. for especially boys that that come from jail. Mm. So you're not mixed in with people that just breach the visa for not working for working legally or. You know, or just didn't leave the country enough time and they get sent to Villa Wood because they don't have a visa. Right. So it's a more you, severe section. It's a more severe yeah. part of it. And that is the ghetto, man. Yeah. That is the ghetto there. Worse than regular prison? Bro, you know what? People always say like, oh, man, Villa Wood is sweet as like, because with that you get like, back then you used, to, you used to be able to get computers. You couldn't have a phone, but like my mate sunk me a phone. But now it's legalized to have a phone in there. You can have, you can have a phone in there. But before, back then, when I was in there, you can only have computers. But still, you can have computers. So, like, everyone's like, man, you got computers, you can go on Facebook, this, that. But it's kind of making everything worse because you send me, you get a taste of the outside now, yeah? So now I have mm. one leg on the outside mm. and one leg on the inside. I'm watching what everyone's doing, but I'm still locked up. Yeah, okay. I'm on the internet. I'm on social media. I'm talking to everyone. So that, that level of detachment that you had in prison actually seemed like a good thing. Exactly right, yeah, man. Because in there, okay. even like, yeah, I, 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 done 18, I done 18 months in Riman. So 18 Riman is, your, doesn't matter how long you're doing, doesn't matter what you're in for, if you're in Riman, it's maximum security jail. Mm. Yeah, you, you, you deal with boys that are doing from five years and over. And then minimum security, minimum security is five years and under. And you do you you have murderers you have everyone boys doing big sentences you know so I was and you get locked in at three p.m. in the afternoon and you getting getting let out at nine in the morning so I'm getting let out at nine in the morning do my training get locked in three in the arvo man you go to sleep you wake up by news time you watch home and away everyone loves home and away in jail like, they do <laughs> every, or you, you, yeah. come, you you come out of this cell the next day man. and all the boys all you do is talk about home and away. Yeah. Why it's though? Really, I don't know. I don't know why. Fuck it, I don't know why. Why? Man. I've talked about this or myself. I don't know. I don't get it. Everyone loves it. Yeah. It's like, you know, you know how the boys have to get locked in. Everyone's yelling out through the windows, you know, mm. like for the doors and that. Home no way is on, man. Any kind of fucking talks through the door, it's on next day, you know, like yeah. fucking no one talks. Everyone shut the fuck up. I it's, it's home no way is on. Shut up. I never, <laughs> I never got the appeal. I had sellies that would demand to watch demand. it. Right? Yeah. People like, people fucking get, get it. Get out in the yard next day and just talk about it. Like, man, so you watch Braxton, that, like you know, like. So when you're in detention, wait. So you were in there because your visa had been cancelled. Yeah, had been cancelled um, for my but, character. But, but but that point, what what was the pathway for you to get out of detention? You had to so fight it I had legally. To I had to fight to get my to to like I had to fight for the revocation. So I had to fight to get my visa back. Yes, my visa return because. I have ground, reasonable ground reasons to stay here. Yes. I'm not just an idiot that just came here and just caused drama. Yeah. Man, I spend more, more time. I've lived longer in Australia now than I lived in Brazil. Yeah. Right? I'm a fucking Aussie. I don't care if I have an accent or whatever. All my Aussie, I feel like this is my home. Yes. I don't even feel the only reason I want to go, go back to Brazil to visit is so I can close this chapter of my mom. Yeah. I don't want anything to do with that country, man. Like, straight mm. out. This like a lot of people talk shit about Australia. A lot of people don't realize how good they have here. Yeah. Oh fuck Australia, this and that, man. Yeah, go try living on the country and see how much the government like look after, like you know, takes takes care of you. Australia does that a lot for you here, and a lot of people don't realize that. And I'm and very so grateful for you know, I'm very grateful for for the government here. They do have their different ways, their funny ways of dealing things. You know, the pandemic, they can be a bit restrict this and that, but. And the day if I have to get deported, there's no way my family is going back to Brazil with me. Mm. They staying here. Mm. My wife told me before he goes, "Baby, if you get deported, like me and the kids are moving back to Brazil." Mm. Um, no way, man. No, no, like I'm not taking my kids out of this country. You must have conflicted feelings though about the government. If you're um, obviously <laughs> there's some people within that which they were trying to kick you out, right? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, when you challenged it in court, there's ones that agreed that you should be able to stay here. Man, right? it wasn't just the government. So like. I had a lot of um, so when I went to court, right? So this is how it works at Villawood. 
once it, once they revoke your visa, you, you get a chance to get your visa back. So that's the first stage before before you start going to all the high courts. Yep. So my dad he ticked up his credit card. It was like the lawyer wasn't that expensive. It was like maybe six seven seven k or something. Mm -hmm. But that's all my dad had. Mm. Like not even cash, it was just through credit cards. Yeah. And he paid for the lawyer. Cause we thought we thought like I am back from you know, I got Marissa then, like, you know, I'm back from partner, everything everything's going good. And we're like, why not? Like why we why wouldn't I get out? Why wouldn't I win the case? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Why will Australia wanna kick you out from your family, you know? Yeah. And then when we're winning them in and I started realizing it was like, I'm fucked. Mm. I was watching boys getting deported, especially from where I was from Black's Land. Pretty sure the rate of boys getting out of there successfully is like three percent. Fuck. Everyone from there just gets deported. It's not like you're in the actual Villa Wood where you, with the immigrants and you see people going home all the time, like you know, back get the visas back to actually you know to, to stay here. Yeah. You get to see it's all the boys from jail. You see, you feel like you feel like it's it feels like jail in there because you see all the boys from jail in there. You know, a lot of boys. You see boys from there. Yeah. And but man, yeah. And then you start hearing all these stories. You start talking to boys in there. And you're like, boys that have three, four kids. They've grew up here. They've committed. You know, maybe the, what like less of a crime than you or like things like that. And they still get imported. Mm. And I'm like, I'm fucked. So my dad spends all his money on this on his lawyer, and I get I get I get knocked back. They go, nah, are you going back to fucking Brazil? And I'm like, no, I'm fucking not. And then next stage, okay, sweet, let's go to AAT. So it's AAT. So there's like AAT, federal, high court, supreme, or something like that. Yeah. And then at the next stage, the AAT, and then they go, the lawyer goes, oh yeah, sweet, it'll be another like 10k, 8k. I don't have any money, man. Mm. I've got no more money. I've, I've given you, my dad has given you everything he has, literally, literally. Yeah, it's an additional problem when you're trying to fight a legal challenge, but also this costs money, right? Oh, man, so everything costs money. And, but but like, but see, the difference between jail and Villawood, a lot of people, so when I go to Villawood, Villa there's a lot of backlash. A lot of people's like, you're given, a, I was given a second chance when I went to jail and I got out and I've, I got myself into the into the fight. That was my second chance, right? So people looked at as my second chance. Mm. I look at my second chance as man, the pressure of you being Villa Wood, the head fuck. It's not about like you getting out. It doesn't matter if you're doing ten years in jail. At the end of the day, you know you're gonna get out, you're gonna go, you're gonna go, you're gonna go back to your house, you're gonna back to your family, to your friends. Yeah. Villa Wood, it's like if you if you get out. You, if you get deported, you're going back to a country where you don't know that I haven't been in you the have last nothing 15 there. years. Yeah. I don't know anyone there. At this stage, <laughs> I can barely speak, I can I can speak English now, but I can, you know, I'm not full hectic speaking English. I still have my, you know, <laughs> my thoughts at it. Mm. I can barely speak Portuguese now. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I barely speak I barely speak Portuguese now. You know what I mean? So like I'm going back to a country where I've, I sound like a fucking idiot if I speak Portuguese. Um I don't, my family, like I said, they all came from very good, like, no one really looks at me like, the same look down on me now. I'm a criminal now in their eyes, you know? Mm. Especially like if the good family, they're like, like I said, like we very have, have very like mentality, different mentalities. And they, they, that's the way they look at people, you know? If you're criminal, you're criminal. Like um, my grand grandma, she was just like, she hated me, man. When she, mm. she was like so against criminals, you know? When she heard I got locked up, that was it, that was it, that was, she's passed now, but she only kept in touch with my sister. She didn't mm. want anything to do with me because she's like, you're a fucking criminal now, how dare you, you know? Yeah. Um. So yeah, so it's like, man, it's it's either me fighting for my family to stay here and my family, I'm talking about my brothers, they actually raised me here on the streets, no blood family. I love my sister, you know, my and my dad, a lot, a lot of love for them, but my family, it's the boys that grew up here, you know, that that's, that's who I, I classify as my family. The ones that have been there for me every step of the way. When I was locked up, when I was starving, we starved together, you know? We've done everything together. We went through tough times together. And that's who I look at as my family. And yeah, and I was like, well, I'm going to go back to Brazil to nothing. But also like your uh, Marissa's here, right? Yeah. Your wife's here. 
Um, I think that's a big part. That no, they're not really just, considering no, no, exactly uh, is that the impact on these kids that are they're, they're Australian citizens, but their parents being sent but that's to another thing. country. So like right? it's you think so, and everyone said that to me. He goes, but you know, you, you got you got this now. Right now, I have three kids. Hmm. Yeah, I have Marissa, Onyx, and Kalani. Hmm. When all this happened, I only have Marissa. Hmm. When all the immigration things are happening, since since I've been out from Villawood, it's been over five years now since I've been out. Hmm. I haven't reoffended. Hmm. I haven't committed a crime. I've been on my best behavior I could ever be. Hmm. Yeah, I have my ups and downs. Everyone does. I'm not perfect. I'm not here, and I'm not here, I'm not gonna say, tell, it, sit here. And Talk shit to your face and say I'm a fucking angel. I don't do crime anymore. Yeah, I 100 percent do not do crime anymore. But you know, I might have my ups and downs and just you know just have a couple of drinks in there. You know, just you know just have a little bit of head down. Sure, but, but I like, still have my daughter that come home to my kids. You know, and I'm still I'm a, I'm a family man now, and um I've gone through Villawood, and going back to where I was, it got to the lawyer. The lawyer was like, you know, you need oh yeah, give me another AK, whatever it was. Mm. Man, I don't have any more money, so now I'm fighting for my family, you know? So I studied my case for three months, man. So my next court date was was in three months' time. And I was like, that was not one day, not one day, I promise you, I'm not even lying, that I didn't wake up and now I thought to myself, shit, I'm going to get deported. Mm. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Every single day I woke up, I go, I'm getting, you know, affirmations, man. They're real. They're real. You know, people say like, you know, oh, blah, blah, man. You, you think of positive things, you're going to bring positive things, right? And I just woke up every single morning and I said, you know, I'm so grateful to be out of this place. you got to talk like it's already happened. You know, I'm so grateful for my visa. Like, and then, man, every single morning I woke up so confident. And uh, I was with this, this Brazilian Sally at the time. And he was a very wise guy. He was a super wise guy. This, this guy, man, I couldn't believe he was locked up. Like he was going back, you know, for his crime. And then super smart guy, I learned a lot from him. And then and then he, he gave me a lot of confidence. And then I just took notes, I read about it, my case, wrote my notes. I done percentages of like, of of unemployment in Brazil. I done percentages, you know, of all these things like of crime, uh, crime statistics, all these things, kidnapping rates, all these things, you know. So when the DPP, um, let's call it DPP, the immigration lawyer, when, mm. you know, whatever came at me, I fucking was ready for him. So, so, you, so you decided to defend yourself, so right? So I go, I'm going to defend myself, man. <coughs> and I'm going to fight for my life. Because if I go back to Brazil, I will probably wouldn't be alive, to be honest. So, but so what, you had to use statistics of just Brazil to say... So for example, so like when I sit down in court, <laughs> so like it was just me, it was just me, the judge... Mm -hmm. And the DPP, the, the immigration defense lawyer. Yep. So the guy that's trying to fuck me over, the, try, the guy that's trying to say, You're saying send, me. But send usually, I'm, a, but usually I'm, I'm meant to have a lawyer next to me. Yep. But it's, there's no lawyer, it's just me. Me and my papers, I put all the papers out on yep. the table. I sit down. I think that's what made me win, man. Because like, I just spoke to the judge, like face to face, you know. Wasn't no one speaking for me. Wasn't no one telling my story for me. Wasn't yep. just me. Like I'm, like I'm telling my story to you right now. Yes. I put all my plates, or all my plates, all my papers, papers on the table, all my notes, all my statistics, you know? And the DPP be like, I thought I'm going to go, I've always worked here my whole life, you know? I'm a hard worker, this and that. Oh, Mr. Fernandez, um, if you've worked here your whole life, then there shouldn't be a problem if we deport you. It shouldn't put, be a problem for you to go back to Brazil and find a job there. Mm. I'm like, yes, you would think so, right? But, and then I had it. This, this, I can't remember right now, but I go, this an amount of people unemployed in Brazil. I had all these things ready now, all these little things that like, whatever he said to me, I just had something to go back straight at him. And the judge said, just sitting there, mm. they just don't even say anything. Mm. And just the DPP trying to fuck me over. And the judge just going like, and I'm just giving to him. Everything he had to say to me, I go, yes, but no, this mm. and this and that. But surely the human interest piece, like your your roots to the community here, is the strongest argument, right? Exactly, like, man. You've and got, like, you've I got a wife and kids and family exactly ties right. and all these kind of but things. They, they don't care. He's trying to tell me, he goes, you know, um, well, you know, there's, there'll be, you know, like he's saying, there'll be no problem for you to find a, uh, a job there. You know, um, your your family, they, they speak English, they'll follow you. Mm. You know, they'll be good. He go, nah, 
I'm not gonna take my my my, my pun on my family day. You know why? Because in Brazil, every three seconds in São Paulo, just São Paulo, the city I was born, just that some that city, every three seconds someone gets kidnapped. Mm. You think I'm gonna take my kids there? No way. All right. Mm. So whatever you wanna say, you wanna say yeah, you're gonna take my family. No, I'm not taking my family back to Brazil. Mm. And I'm not gonna find a job in Brazil because there's this many. Look at the employment there. Look at the employment rate. I should be here. I belong here. I've been here for so long. And you so know what I mean? Like, so you made this heartfelt argument. You had all the your papers yeah, there. And, and I'm speaking to the judge face to face, <laughs> and the DPP trying to fuck me. And the judge, you know, I think he really fucking felt it. Mm. And I wasn't fucking around when I said it. You know, and then and then and then after that, you get given two weeks for your result for your answer. Fuck, that's a hard time to think. Sit there. Two thinking. weeks, man. Mm. To sit on like, cause I'm not seeing. I'm not waiting for. I'm not waiting. It's not two weeks for me to get out of jail. It's not like you know waiting for your sent, for, for release date. Yeah, it feels like a death sentence but moving man, over. Man, it's like in two weeks. I want to know if I'm gonna go back to the country that I haven't been to mm. in in so many years, Since we were and I'm gonna lose everything here. Mm. Or in two weeks, I'm gonna find out that I wanna that I wanna win and wanna and that I wanna stay, stay here. Mm. And that two weeks was fucked. Man, I had a burn of me because back then you couldn't you couldn't have a phone and then I just constantly kept because you get your answer for an email because there you got computers right. Mm. I'm not gonna be sitting on a computer. I'm like, I keep myself here. I was like, no one comes in here because the answer goes. The answer doesn't come at eleven nine thirty in the morning. That's the time you're gonna get your answer. Like, I remember, man, it was like eight thirty in the morning. This was like, nah, get out. Thomas said, get out, and I'm just pacing up another cell. You know, I'm shaking, man. I'm keep refreshing my phone to see if I get if I'm getting the you know the email. Usually you just check on the computers, whatever. Yep. But man, I'm fucking stressed out, you know. And then it finally came through. And 9:30 in the morning. And exactly 9:30 in the morning, it was like 9:31. I refreshed mm. it. My heart, man, so my heart's just bouncing. Everything just goes blurry. Everything just arounds me like I can't hear, I can't see anything but just my phone. I open, I open my email, man. That was so that was the best feeling, best feeling walking out of jail the first time was like, and I'm reading through this letter and like, I don't even know I'm reading. I'm just looking for a old word of saying like, you're out or you're getting out. Or Visa something. reinstated like, something. Whatever. Right? And yeah. I'm just freaking out and I see something that says like, <laughs> yeah, Visa accepted or something. I was like, wait, wait, wait. I like read again and I was like, kick my door. I start screaming. All the boys in the yard, everyone's screaming. I'm like, I'm fucking going home. I mean, I fucking won. I won the case. I did it. Mm. No one fucking did it for me. Mm. Yeah, no one, man. I did it myself. And were you let out of Villawood that day? Yeah, man. It took him like two and a half hours or something, yeah, three hours. Mm. My mate said, um, already came, like, they already waited for me at the front, Slacker, Janay, Demo. They came pick me up. And, like, yeah, I was, I remember, like, it's just doing laps up and down for like two and a half hours. Like, just, are they gonna let me out or what? You know, just let me out. Mm. And then that was him in. And then Marissa, she didn't know. So like she Marissa, she used to come visit me in Villawood. Mm. And um she used to think that I used to tell her, what's, what did they say? That I was in like um um what's the naughty school called? Like we go boarding school. <laughs> I was say I was in boarding school. I was like, you know, I do something naughty and I'm in boarding school. I can't I can't come home, babe. I can't come home. She was yeah. young back then, she was like so, so 16, she's like, she's like seven years old, six or seven mm. years old, you know? Yeah. She's gullible, gullible, you know? She's <laughs> believing it. Feed her some bullshit, yeah. Man, and then like, you know, we have like, you know, my, um, I met a very good friend in there, uh, Billa, and she's come, it's um Samoan lad. Sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry, Billa. He's, um, he's, um, my talk of, um, he's Tongan. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> He's Tongan. Yep. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> but Marissa, the most story is Marissa, she comes to visit. Mm. She would see with him and his wife. And and because they were just, you know, have that big face. And she just be with them, like, because they got along, got, they got along with her. Like, they still look after her, like, was like their daughter, you know, like, have his, so just be me and my partner. I would even see some Marissa sometimes. She'd be like with the, with the table. Off socializing. Socializing. Yeah. She'd be like, there's a park there. You can, you know, run around, whatever, yeah, you know. Cool. It's a better vibe than, um, then jail visits, that's for sure. Of course. But yeah, but she falls I was in, in thingy, in boarding school. And then and then when I came home, when I got you know, I came I got dropped off straight to, to my to my home where she lives. Mm. And then I knocked on the door and she opened the door. And then like I told her Nico I go like I'm coming home, but like don't tell Marissa, you know? And then Marissa opened the door and then she her face was just like <gasps> Dad <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you like you had a boy like you had a boarding school? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like so baby. Yeah. yeah, and like she man, she was like so she was tiny back then. Now she's she was like a she's like a, she's a woman now, you know. So you won the case. It's been that long. I won the case and it's been five years now, man. It's been over five years. Immigration contacted me once, two years later. Mm. They sent two years later after I got out. They didn't give me my permanent. They gave me my bridging visa, what I've been on since 2011. My bridging visa, waiting for my permanent. Yeah. And they gave that back to me. That's what they gave back to me. And so what do you think that means? When, when, you know what that what, means? What, yeah. That means that kid tomorrow they can turn around and be like, Pedro, you're going home. Yeah. Or they, tomorrow they can turn around, Pedro, you're staying. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm a limbo. But I can't, there's no, there's no, there's no a time or not. There's no bridging visas. There's no time or not. I've emailed them. I've sent them thousands of emails. Since, like I was saying before, since, Marie, since I've got out of Villawood, it's been over five years, I've had Onyx now. I've got married twice. With the same girl that married the first time, we divorced. We that's that's hey, well, that's when you know someone's crazy, right? When they marry the same girl and they divorce. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm married again. Yep. Right? Now I've got two more kids. I've got Onyx, mm -hmm. which um Jesus, how old is Onyx now? <laughs> Three, he's turning four. Sorry, he's turning four in October. Yes. Yep. And and I got Clanny. She's she's turning. She's like six months mm -hmm. in like in a few days, on the seventh. So, and and uh, is, immigration is it, has contacted me once. Is it possible? Like, uh, do you think that they could be just like, oh, let's just wait till he breaks the law again? One hundred percent. You know, I reckon. Um, I reckon for sure. It's been. I reckon they re they're waiting for the <laughs> ten year period. Maybe mm. there's a ten year period that you know, their criminal record gets wiped. That's that's what I'm that's 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 what I'm expecting. Because it's, so exactly. it's, it's been so long, right? It's been so long that you so. think that um, they're they're just saying, well, look, if he's well, let's just keep him on the bridging visa. If yeah. he doesn't fuck up for long enough, then we'll give it to him. Exactly. Or otherwise, we can we've got enough to be able to exactly. keep him out. Exactly. Exactly right. And I think that's what's happening, man. But like now, it's just it's getting to a stage now that it's gone. It's dragging on a bit too long. Of course, it's hanging over your head. You man, just want I, I'm 33 now. Yeah, I came mm. here when I was 14 years old. Yeah, I've been on this shift since 2011. And yeah, it, this is all my fault. I started this end of the day, man. I'm a man and I, I take responsibility for my own actions. If I was a good person and done everything by the books like my sister did, my sister, she's a full Australian citizen now. I would yeah. be a citizen. But, but what, I fucked up. Yes, I fucked up. I know it. What are the rules on the bridging visa for you now What you, that you can and can't do? I can't work. I can't travel. Mm. And I can't study. So you're, so you're, you're essentially, so you're basically stuck here as a hostage in Australia. I'm stuck right? as a hostage. I can't even go to, I can't even go to New Zealand if I want to. I can't even go to the closest destination. I can go to Queensland and Perth and Melbourne. And what benefit to anyone is it saying that you can't work either for Man, years? It's, look, immigration is a weird thing. Um, like I said, once I've gone to Villa Wood and I've seen, <coughs> you know, if you've been, if you if you've been in Villa Wood for long enough. If you lived outside your country for long enough that you don't have a citizenship there, right? So yep. there's this lad in Villawood. Mm. He's, he's lived in Australia his whole life. He's fucked up here. And then now that since that, that stuff, the 501 started, they breached his visa. So he's been fighting Villawood for now over eight years, 10 years. He's been there for, he's been there for over 10 years now. This guy, he's a fool, like he's a master. He knows all the immigration laws by now. He knows everything. And man, if you if you don't have a citizenship, so if you've been in Australia for long enough for Australia not to recognize for your own country that you meant to have a citizenship in, not to recognize you as a citizen, mm. and Australia doesn't want you here, you know what happens? They give you a free destination choices. They they pick free countries and you gotta pick what country you wanna go to. What options do they give you? Or like will be like shit outs. It'll be like Papua New Guinea or like you mm. they'll give free really like shit for like and you gotta pick. And then you gotta go to a country that you've never been to in your whole at life yeah. at all. Nothing at all, bro. Yeah. That's what they do. It's a good country. I love doing game wrong. I love Australia. I love this country. Mm. But the way they, they split, they can split. But this guy's currently in, in Villawood. And as far as I know of, he's still in there right now. See, one of the boys just got out. Um, sh shout out to H. Man, he's just done seven years. This guy's he's a bikey, right? But he doesn't have a criminal record. This guy does not have one criminal record. Because he's a bikey, yeah, he's a bad person, right? He's a bikey. Ooh, he's a bikey. He's a bad person. He's a mm. bad man. 
The guy doesn't even have a fucking criminal record. He's a family man. He got like five kids. Mm. He just got his visa back. He just got out of Villawood, man. He done like seven years. Fucking congratulations, brother. So he's so happy. Without, but so without having even committed a crime, he was stuck not in there. Even, not even committed a crime, brother. <laughs> he didn't commit one crime at all. Only because Peter Dunn did not like him. He goes, mm. mate, bike is, I don't care, you're out. And that's and that's, and they have, they, they can do that, unfortunately. I don't know why they do that. Um... It's a fucking blessed country here, man. Don't you I think? Don't you think it uh, um, would put someone more? I'm not saying you, but like, if you put someone in a situation where they have to stay in this country, right, um, for a bridging visa, but they're also told they can't work, that's more likely to put them in a situation where they think I need to get money from somewhere. They're more likely to commit a crime. Exactly right, man. Like, exactly what, right. Like you're not really giving someone any options. And not even that. It's just like even if you're not gonna work, like my daughter needs me here. My kids need me here. Yeah, you know they need a they need a, a father figure. Every kids need a father figure, and like you need a mother figure too. Mm. Um, you know, like why if why if they deport me tomorrow? My sister she's been getting bullied at school recently. Well, my you think my, my you know the mum's gonna deal with it? Mum is not for that. Mm. That's that's when mum is to give cuddles. You know, it's like you know they they feed you. That's the first stage of the mother. That's you know like mums are there for. But once your kids get older, that's when the dad. The dads, you know, they come in and, mm. you know, I need to be here for my daughter, man. I need to be here for my kids. I need to stand up for what's right. It must be hard for you, right, to feel like you're, you're not only stuck here because you want to be with them, but also um, when they're, like, they're affecting your ability to have a livelihood exactly. and all these things. I can't go to, I can't, you know, I can't go to Bali and, and have family holidays with my, with my family and be like, let's go to Bali. You know, my wife, she had a, you know, um, <coughs> a wedding in um you know, it was oh, it got cancelled now, but she's meant to go to uh, to Colombia for a wedding, and like everyone would have to go. Like you know, it's one of her friends, good friends as well. Like she, yeah. they, they, everyone would have went. I would have had to stay here. I like you know what I mean? It's not fucking fair, man. It's not fair for my family to miss out on doing things as well because of me. No, I just you know what I mean. Yeah, it, when you hear these kind of stories, right, and you hear how they actually uh, affect people, it doesn't seem like there's much humanity to these kind of rules nah, in Australia. Man. For a lot of people, for for government, that thinks you know, you know that they really try to care for people, which they do. Mm. Financially, government, the government, you know, financially, they do provide a lot, way more of like, you know, health insurance, you know, if you don't work here. For you to be homeless here, man, like, you got to you gotta have like mental issues or something, mm. you know, like. You, you like have to the choose it. Yeah, the government gives, like, helps you a lot, man. Yeah. Which you, you don't recognise that, you don't see, you won't see that in other countries, mm. on, unless you live, you live there and then you know. Yeah. Like I know because I've seen it. Yeah, and yeah, but like when it comes to family, no fucks given, eh? Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, so I don't know why. So you're stuck in this limbo, so right? Stuck in uh, this limbo. Until until who knows, right? Until who knows? Could be another five years. Could be another. Could be tomorrow. Mm. I could get an email tomorrow saying get the fuck out or stay, or I could get an email in five years time, two years time. I don't know, man. I just even if it's a no, I'm getting to a stage like even if you're gonna give me a no. Mm. Just do it. You had the chess ones in Villawood. Yeah. The why? Yeah. Why, man? Why? Why? Like, seems, what are you trying to do? It seems crueler just to hang it over your head. That's. I think. That's. I think. I don't know. They try and play my games with me or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but mm. hey, I'm not going anywhere. I'll tell you that much. But um, <laughs> I mean, that all aside, you've you said you know it's been five years since you got out, and um, the way you talk, it sounds like you're a you know, you're on a much more positive path now, and you're a much better version of yourself. Yeah, man. Um, I'm definitely. On you that. must be at least proud of that. I'm so I'm very proud of that man because um you know I went through some pretty hectic shit recently um that that really that that, that really tests me mm. um you know losing my best mate to cancer mm. PY um like this guy was a brother you know this is the guy you mentioned earlier that he he was his mum was uh, your yeah, Aussie yeah, mum yeah yeah yep. mum like he was my actual you know mum. We call people when we when we meet like meet other people. He'd be like, "Oh, this is my brother." They'd be like, "No, he's not, because he's white. He's mm. he's, he's pommy background." Yeah, and he's like, "Well, but you're he's black. How can he be your brother?" You know, they'd be like, "He's my brother." I'm telling yeah. you, that's how we used to treat each other. You know, like we're actually blood brothers. Not even just we actually used to treat each other like blood brothers. Yeah, and yeah, um, and he got diagnosed with bowel cancer at the age of like. 26, 27. Mm. It's fucked. Um, I was telling my doctor the other day, 
And my doctor told him, believe me, he goes, nah, it must be something else. Mm. I go, no, man, it was bowel cancer. Because mm. he eats un- unheard of. At to be age. that young. Man, he's a healthy man, you know. Mm. Um, very healthy boy. Loves surfing. You know, just loves surfing. And, you know, exercising, just train together all the time. Do everything together. And then out of nowhere, just one day he just, just kind of collapsed. And then done some done some tests and, yeah, came back. Stage four bowel cancer. How long and did he live after that? The doctors gave me gave him one year to mm. two years max, mm. and they told him you you're not gonna have any kids ever again. I'm sorry, you won't be able to have kids, and you'd be that in, in one year mark. Two years stage four, it's like was pretty aggressive as well. Yeah, man, he he lived for <laughs> five years, four or five years. He got two kids, had two kids. His boy Connor and Tyler, Connor's my godson. Um, you know, I made him, made him a promise. I'll look after them like they're my own kids, you know. Um, I asked P.Y. It, just before he, the Saturday, he passed away on a Tuesday. I slept with him in the hospital on the Saturday night. Mm. You know, we just we always play PlayStation, play FIFA all the time. And they say, we always grow up, you know. And he has, he's already knew, he's, he knew he was coming to his last few weeks. Yeah, The cancer was so, like, aggressive, they start started to wrap around his spine mm. and like his last few weeks he couldn't he couldn't walk anymore yeah fuck and then on my birthday i went to visit him in hospital that's when he was like just a few days before he passed he sent me a message he goes don't come up you know i just shut my, just shut myself mm. i don't want you to see me like this but i didn't see the message i just went straight up mm. and then like i was just, as soon as I walked in i could smell shit and I will never forget his face. He was so embarrassed, you know. And then he got to a point. It was like I don't want to see my brother shoot himself like that. Mm. He was in so much pain, man. He was in so much pain. I never seen someone in so much pain like that before. Mm. He was a true fighter, you know. The things I went through did nothing compared to what. And it's not just him too. It's just all the ripple effect is all the family, all the friends, everyone watching, you know, watching. Watching someone going through that, it's pretty it's devastating. Hectic. Yeah. Watching someone dying from cancer, it's a pretty horrific thing, man. Especially mm. seeing the body change. Yeah. From a super fit guy, he's, you know, probably sway like, I don't know, 75 kilos, probably passed away at like 140 kilos or something, like just full fluids and like, man, he said, I thought of his tumor once that was growing, that was growing in his. On his like on his back and his lungs, mm. like sticking about as much of his back you can see on his photo, like Fuck. like massive. And he went through like, man, he went through like surgeries, twelve hour surgeries. He had like half his gut taken off. They've tried everything, you know. He done chemo, he done everything. He was a true fighter, mm. true true fighter. And yeah, and um, that's why it inspired me to have my first uh, boxing match. I'm just trying to raise some fun for you know for his family. For his kids, that's great. Um, yeah. So, so when are you fighting? Um, so, um, my one of my best mates, my brother Cruz Briggs, he's the head coach and owner of Eastside, Eastside Gym in Metroville. Yeah. Right now he's on camp. He's in Thailand. He's fighting for the WBC uh, international belt. So that fight's in 14th of July. He'll be on Fox uh, Fox Live as well, guys. Check him out, Cruz Briggs. He's so right now he's fighting for the number, it's number seven award. He's number fifteen. Awesome. So if he wins this fight, he'll get the world, the WBC world title uh, uh, fight. So it'll be a big fight. So Amazing. I'm just waiting for him to finish camp from that, which he comes back um, in July, end of July. And yeah, man. And then as soon as soon as he's done with that, um, I told him I want to fight by October because PY would have passed away in October. That'll be his one like anniversary mark. Yep. So I'll 100% be fighting by October. I'll make sure with him, you know, like, like let's make sure we get a fight by then. So he goes, yeah, sweet, let's do it. I've been training hard every day. I ran yesterday, first time I ran a half marathon, 21.1 Ks. Awesome. I'm feeling, man, I'm ready. I'm ready for tomorrow. Like, I've seen photos of your Instagram. Man, I know. You're, uh, <laughs> man, I'm ready to <laughs> <I wouldn't> <laughs> I mean, I'm training hard, man. I've been training. We just finished the East Side Challenge as well, Six Fish Challenge. Yeah. So like I'm I'm ready to. You're go. jacked. I wouldn't want to fight you. I'm fucking ready. You know, <laughs> like so. Any promoters, you know, anyone like fucking wanna do a cancer foundation fight, whatever. Throw me in with the biggest guy you can, you can find. I don't. I won't fight weights or anything. I don't care. 
you know, if you know, whatever. But uh, and so, yeah. how can people find as out? As, as long as it's for a uh, good cause, yeah. And, um, yeah, you can find me. You can find out. I've got a GoFund page link on yep. my Instagram page. Yep. Uh, Pet Fernandez, P E D D Fernandez, all together. On my TikTok as well, it's the same name. And um, yeah, there's a link there on my page. If you know, if everyone's throwing a dollar each, man, you watch me to get watch me getting my head punched in, and, <laughs> you know, and then have good time and have fun. That's yeah. it. And then you know, I'm gonna help my 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 godsons out, and I'm gonna help Pi's family out. Pi made, made me promise him. Um, you know, like I was saying before, the night I said that the Saturday, I go, man, like, what do you want me to do? Like, what can I do for you? You know. And then he just grabbed me by the hand. He goes, just please promise you're going to look after my boys. Mm. And I've made him a promise, man. And I'm not going to let the promise down. Yeah. So um, so that's why I think I'm a changed man. And after going through Villa Wood and being on the borderline of losing my family, my kids, my wife, my other family, my mates here as well, mm. that was my wake-up call. Jay wasn't my wake-up call. Villa Wood was a wake-up call. And now I'm just... And now I feel like I'm ready. I'm ready to change people's life. I'm ready to change my life. You know, I'm on the I'm on the on the good path for it. I, I think um, you know you you have such a positive turnaround story, and I think it's one that um, people want want to hear. Um, so, yeah, I hope that uh, this stops hanging over your head very soon, and you get your permanent residency. Thanks so much, man. Hopefully, I will one day. I will. I know <laughs> I will. A hundred percent, I will. Yeah, one hundred percent. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your story. Thank you so um, much. And, uh, yeah, there'll be a link uh, to the GoFundMe and to your socials uh, on the Spotify uh, for this episode. Thanks so much. It's been another episode of Shit's Gone Sideways. That's it.